What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Canadian Football Fanatics YouTube channel. Much anticipated three-round CFL mock draft is here. We are very excited, all of us, uh, to gather here today to begin uh, our CFL mock draft live stream here on the Canadian Football Fanatics YouTube channel. Um, have a good group of us today that will be mocking today. Um, but nobody here is experts, folks, so this is all for fun. Uh, please no kind of disrespectful comments in the chat or anything like that. All positive. Uh, definitely share your opinion, but no uh, criticism or disrespectful comments or anything like that in the chat, please. Um, this is all for a good time and all for just um, good CFL fans to gather here and kind of have a good time before the draft on April 30th, um, a few weeks out. So to everybody tuning in here today is enjoying our content, our three-round CFL mock draft. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we have a ton of uh, content creators slash uh, just CFL uh, contributors from across uh, the, the community and across the CFL. So please uh, follow them and kind of stay tuned to their work as well. Uh, I will bring them in and introduce them as we go. So as I was saying uh, before we got going in here and as we were teasing it, this is a three-round CFL mock draft with no trades. Everyone will have a five-minute pit clock um, to kind of debate or uh, just kind of give an explanation of why they went for a pick. Maybe they uh, somebody stole a pick in front of them, uh, or they don't have to necessarily take all five minutes when they have their time up. They can come and go as they please. If they want to just come up, uh, kind of select their player and kind of uh, put the next team on the clock, they can do so as well, so no pressure. So I believe we will kind of get going here early. looks like everybody is in the backstage ready to begin. So we will go a little bit earlier than schedule, folks, and I will throw the Edmonton Elks on the clock. So we will head to Edmonton and introduce Andrew from the Turf District. Andrew, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm glad I could uh, be a part of this. I, like I said, I, I don't know that I'll, uh, you know, mock exactly what happens with the Elks, but uh, but well, I'm, I'm excited for this. It's going to be kind of fun with uh, a bunch of these guys that I uh, that I already know and some that I don't, so it's awesome. Thanks for having me. So before we get going, can you tell us a little bit of what you got going at the Turf District? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're in our 10th season now with uh, the Turf District, and it's myself and uh, my two co-hosts, uh, Superfan Mike and Commissioner Kayla. And uh, we, in the off season, we do every two weeks. During the season, we do every week. We're live on Tuesday nights on YouTube, Facebook, and X. Twitter, I always call it Twitter. It's always hard for me to see X. Um, and uh, we uh, we we talk everything about the Elks uh, and everything that's going on uh, in Edmonton as far as the team is concerned, and uh, we do live, and then the podcast comes out a couple of days later. So uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. It's a fun ride. We have our you know decorated rooms and try to be all green and goldy, and it's a it's a ton of fun. Awesome. So without further ado, then Andrew, I will throw you on the clock. We will set the timer. You got five minutes. You can take as much time as you want, or you can turn to uh ottawa and decide who they want to pick but the edmonton elks are now on the clock Ooh, lovely look at that even got a scroller that's cool uh i'm gonna make this easy for the number one pick uh, i don't uh, don't want to waste a, a, a yeah, lot of time, a lot of time. I, I think this one's pretty pretty easy for me uh i'm gonna go uh with the linebacker joel de uh so um he Qualified for the draft just recently, did well at the Combine, but he does have an Edmonton tie as well uh, with his father having family in Edmonton. So uh, I always lean towards those guys that will want to stay here for uh, after that first three years. So Joel Dublanco, number one overall with the Edmonton Elks. Awesome. I like to I like to see it. There, there has been a few. I know there's not too many mock drafts out there, but I know there was a few that uh, Mr. Dublanco was mocked to the Elks. So uh, nothing out of the ordinary. I like to pick. Um, I think he fits somewhat of a need. I know they did kind of draft a linebacker, I believe, last year uh, yep. in the first round. But I think someone that can come in and uh, compete to play on day one, give you that special team's value. So I like the pick. Um, Andrew, is there anything else that you like to maybe explain? Or just would you like to turn to Ottawa and put them on the clock? Well, I'm just going to expand a little bit on what you said uh, with them drafting Broderick last year um, and them moving on from Adam Konar. They're they're looking for those Canadian linebackers and, and this guy being an all around athlete that's lands right in the Chris Jones realm of somebody who can uh, do special teams right away and probably step in uh, to a linebacking role later in the season if need be. So 
really like with this guy what he can bring and I'd, I'd be surprised if they didn't do at least that pick on the on the 30th awesome thank you so much andrew so i see there's a few people in the chat here on twitter and on youtube if anybody's liking to voice their opinion feel free like i said no disrespectful comments though um if anyone's kind of liking to maybe uh disagree or not maybe go against what andrew like uh feel free to voice your opinion and let it be known in the chat andrew thank you so much we will hear from you in a bit so we will bring in shane shane thanks for joining us tonight how you doing buddy i'm good thank you for having me so uh would you tell us a little bit about uh 13th man sports and everything you got going on there before uh you pick yeah i mean 13th man sports it's uh kind of a start off as a football related uh podcast it's kind of expanded um looking forward to another season of, of mostly cfl football i know we have a couple of content creators you yourself a couple of other ones that are going to be doing you sports uh, myself i'm going to be doing a lot of red blacks focused uh come training camp uh so this is a good uh kickoff for the 2024 year awesome buddy i know you've been looking forward to this you have an idea what you're doing that too and would you like uh ottawa to be put officially on the clock yeah for sure i mean i have an idea and it, it might be uh, a bit of a reach at number two but i uh going through the the prospect scouting and seeing who is available and you know ottawa's needs i i kept kind of going back to this player um he had a down year in 2023 uh, i'm going to be picking wide receiver out of laval kevin Mattel. uh 2022 um had a Crichton award winner from from laval he's a canadian receiver the red blacks only have three of them currently on the roster he has the speed um speed and size to play uh inside slot on either side of the field so he's a guy that could be a difference maker and again i think it might be People might view it as a reach at number two, but he can be a difference maker in the CFL. I like it. Um, a guy that had, you know, a lot of question marks going into the CFL combine. I think he answered those, right? A lot of people were worried about his weight kind of weighing in, I believe, at uh, around 230 pounds. Uh, runs an excellent 40-yard dash. And then, obviously, the previous 2022 season was uh, fabulous. And then he uh, performs well in, uh, from what we heard, all the pattern practices and then what we saw on Sunday as well. So, um, personally, you know, I love the pick. Um, I, I would have maybe, uh, liked for him to fall a little bit further, but, um, personally, I like the pick. I think he's going to be a special player. Um, I think somebody that's going to come in and be a very good, uh, CFL player, but is there any else that anything else you'd like to say about Mr. Michael? No, I mean, I think his, I know last year was a down year. He only played in four of the eight games for, for Laval during the regular season. Uh, I think there's more potential that we saw from the 2022 year, but I think overall, if you're a team that's looking for, Canadian talent, kind of a ratio breaker, so to speak, at, at a receiver position. He's a guy who may not be a week one starter, but could see valuable reps come like mid season at the at the latest. Um, I just like everything he brings to the table, and he could be someone that in a Tommy Condell system that utilizes the receivers in the run game quite a bit. We saw that with Hamilton. He can be used in that formation. Awesome, thanks, Shane, so much. Um, we will take Ottawa off the clock and we will head to Saskatchewan. Bruce Olson from the Rogue blog. Uh, Bruce, before you pick, would you tell us a little bit about what you got going on for uh, the Rogue blog? Sure. So uh, my uh, my blog, Rouge the, the Rouge blog. Yeah, yeah. So the Rouge blog is something I started uh, at the start of this year. Um, just like a fun little project that I wanted to do to start writing about the Canadian Football League because I love it. Uh, and it's actually got got grown uh more than i thought it would to be honest and uh it's given me a lot of connections with uh with, with people uh and you know, i've been able to do this and it's it, it's really been a great experience and uh moving into the cfl season uh we'll we'll be doing uh preseason coverage or i'll be doing preseason coverage and uh and then every week in the cfl i'll uh, i'll hit a review and power rankings and uh we'll see how it goes Awesome, man. Looking forward to those. So we will officially put the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on the clock, Bruce. You have the okay. third overall pick in the CFL draft. You are in charge. What are you doing? Okay, so the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were pretty busy in free agency, and they may have gotten uh, a certain person uh, from the Toronto Argonauts. So uh, to help this uh, certain person along the line, I'm going to be drafting Gabe Wallace at number three overall. 
I like it. The uh, Buffalo, out of the University of Buffalo, I believe, yep. uh, from Salmon Arm, BC, a big bodied uh, run defending, or uh, excuse me, kind of uh, run, rushing, attacking uh, offensive guard. So yep. uh, what kind of made you go towards Gabe Wallace out of uh, all the offensive linemen? Obviously, the first offensive lineman pick, you had your pick of the litter. And what made you choose uh, Gabe Wallace? It's a big dude. Uh, get getting uh, defenders' faces. Uh, I know the Riders already had uh, a whole bunch of uh, help that they got in free agency, like uh, Jamarcus Hardrick and Ryan Sevior. But uh, if if they want a future uh, for their O line, because those guys, uh, I hate to break it, but they're not that young. So if they want a future on the O line, then uh, start starting to invest in the younger guys is a great way to go. And I think Gabe Wallace could really be a, a difference maker for them. Awesome, and I like the pick. Gabe Wallace at number three. To recap the first three picks, we had Joel DeBlanco going to Edmonton, Kevin Mitel going to Ottawa, and now Gabe Wallace at the University of Buffalo, offensive guard, going to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Blake, thank you so much for picking at number three, buddy, and we'll talk you down the road here in the draft. Thanks. We will bring in voice of the riders, Mark Steven, Hall of Famer. Mark, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. And uh, tell us what you got going on before the season here. Well, just uh, thank you, first of all, for the chance. This is a lot of fun. I do follow the draft and do follow the prospects and, you know, try to attend as many uh, University of Calgary games as I can to see both the uh, UFC and their opponents. And uh, we're looking forward to the season. Uh, I wish camp was starting today. It's a simply beautiful day here in Calgary and looking forward to uh, this draft. Awesome. So we will officially throw the Stampeders on the clock, Mark. Who are you selecting with the fourth overall pick in the first round? All right. Looks very right. intimidating. Now on the clock. So I'm on the clock and I'm going to maybe go a little off the board. But the Calgary Stampeders are really thin when it comes to Canadians in their secondary. Uh, due to injuries and other circumstances, they just uh, don't have a lot of depth there. So I'm going to go with Benjamin Labos from McGill. Had a very good camp. Yes, I know there are some questions about him, but he's got the athletic skill. And uh, I think he's a guy they could use. They might even be able to use him this year and just jump in there because they do need some help. They've, they've got some uh, other players in the secondary, of course, but we'll also give them some ratio flexibility if they do play a Canadian safety, which they didn't do last year because of injuries. So that's mine. Maybe it's a little uh, different than others had on the charts, but they need a guy like this. And I think that's where they're going to go. I like the pick. Um, he's been obviously... A lot of talk about him after the combine and his performance he put up with the combine. I believe he didn't play too much this past season, but yeah. um, was a good had a good performance in his 2022 year at uh, the University of McGill. I believe a transfer back to Canada from the University of Syracuse. Um, very athletic guy that will definitely, I think, contribute right away on special teams. And I think it's more of a question mark of maybe where he'll be able to contribute on defenses, maybe at the corner spot with his athleticism. I know he ran um, a pretty decent 40-yard dash. I believe it was in the four fives. Um, or, or is he maybe shifted towards playing safety? Um, will definitely be interesting. I like to pick, but Marcus, yeah. is there anything else that you'd like to say about uh, Benjamin? No, just uh, there's a need for that. As I say, right now under contract, they've got Malcolm Thompson picked up as a free agent, Nick Stats, who's a local product, and Daniel Amoka missed all of last year, the York product, and I don't know what his future is. It was a very serious knee injury, so maybe he's ready to go for the start of camp, but I'm not going to guarantee it. So they do need some help at the secondary. That's the way I see the uh, Stampeders lining up. Awesome. So, Mark, we will talk to you soon. We will go to Toronto and Connor O'Neill from CFP. Connor, how you doing? Thank you for joining us. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much for having me on. So I know we're not, uh, nobody's an expert here, but maybe the guy that's probably most uh, informed when it comes to prospects. Um, but like I said, nobody's an expert here. All for a good time. All for uh, some good content, good fun with uh, some CFL fans here. So, Connor, we will throw you on the clock at fifth overall. Toronto's now on the clock. Who are you selecting? I have to uh, kind of wave my fist here at Shane Ryan over there uh, because he took my pick. I was going to go with uh, Kevin Mattel here for the Argos. I'm still going to keep it at wide receiver because there is another kind of maybe hidden gem in this class or maybe not so hidden anymore after the combine. Uh, but there is a, a re receiver out of Bemidji State that I've really been loving, Dell Duncan Busby. Uh, he had a great combine. He moves really well. I thought he looked really good uh, in – in uh, you know, throughout the combine, the way he tested. I watched a lot of his tape. 
Uh, certainly a guy that has, has really caught my eye. And he was over double-digit touchdowns this year for Bemidji State. He's open kind of 24-7. Call this guy 7-11, whatever you want. But, yeah, loving Dell Duncan Busby. Awesome, man. So um, I'd like to pick two receivers going in the top five. Um, probably could have seen that, but just maybe depending on maybe who uh, goes first with Mytel and uh, Marner, obviously you could have flip-flopped them. Maybe uh, Marner goes a little bit higher, but um, I like the selection. Before we go to BC, Connor, tell us about everything you got going on at CFP. I know you guys uh, released your top 100 and all that stuff. Obviously the East-West Bowl coming out. Um, tell us about everything you got going on over there. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, certainly ramping up if you are a U Sports fan right now. If you're, if you're a CFL fan, this is a great time for you especially with the crossover. Uh, CFP, it's myself, Marshall Ferguson, Wade Zanketa. Uh, we are focused on the draft uh, right now. A lot of U sports between myself and Wade. Marsh kind of handles the CFL things, but that guy is a, is a wizard at all things Canadian football. So um, we we obsess over the draft year-round, so we're, we're pretty excited for the end of the month here coming up. We've got a lot of stuff coming out. Like you mentioned, we had the, uh, the top 100 – come out uh, a couple weeks ago we uh, kind of poured a lot of a lot of time and film into watching those players and ranking some of those players so uh, if if any of the viewers here are curious there is a list of kind of a hundred draft prospects even if like you disagree with the order or whatever like it is it's a pretty extensive list of uh, names to kind of familiarize yourself with I definitely use it in preparing for this uh, here mock draft so I appreciate all your content all the stuff you guys got going on over there um, Connor if you don't mind, I uh, will bring Blake on. I'm not too sure if he's going to be able to join us, but maybe keep you on for the pick here, seeing as that you don't pick for uh, a little bit and you are uh, knowledgeable when it comes to some of these prospects. So, Blake, first of all, can you hear us at all, buddy, and are you able to join us? I'm going to go with no. So uh, I will represent here at six overall. Put BC on the clock. Um I'm going to go a few, I went a few ways here in my head, but ultimately I'm going to go back to um, an offensive lineman. I'm going to go to the University of Laval in Nathaniel Dumlin uh, Duguay, I believe it is. Um, I believe a very a versatile offensive lineman that will be able to kind of come in and learn, hopefully in BC. You don't need kind of a starter right away. I believe a guy that can uh, provide uh, kind of a depth option in a variety of positions. Um, a guy that was a very athletic guy at the Combine. Um, impressed when it came to putting on the pads and all that stuff as well. Um, and then uh, the resume that he put up at uh, Laval as well, I really like that. Um, as well as kind of him being a versatile piece that can kind of fill in at, you know, maybe tackle guard as well as center. I believe he took some reps there um, at the combine as well. But Connor, what do you think about the pick and the Mr. Uh, Dumlin Duguay being the third offensive lineman off the board? Uh, you're never going to hear me say a bad word about a, an, a Laval offensive lineman. Uh, they just develop them so well. Uh, in, in the RSEC and and at Laval specifically, uh, got to look back on that that has succeeded really well throughout this draft process and and again now with the Red Blacks, Cyril Hogan Saint Don. He was a guy uh, during his draft year that uh, over at CFP we were all kind of drooling over after we we watched his tape and and watched him during that U Sports season. So uh, I mean, Laval offensive lineman, never never really a bad pick uh, in my books. I think they're guys that you can start or stash depending on their the need of the team. Uh, certainly for BC, this might be a developmental developmental guy, but you know the more offensive lineman, the better, in, in my opinion. Awesome. So um, let's take it to the entertainment at pick number seven. We will bring in Hamilton's own, or maybe I should say Scamilton's own, I guess. Coach Phil selecting with the seventh overall pick. Coach, what up, Cole? Coach Phil, thank you for joining us. How you doing? Um, I like the costume and everything you got going on, but are you excited for the uh, mock draft here? I mean, if I if I could break this out for one day, you know I'm ready, baby. All right, buddy. Are you ready to be officially <laughs> put on the clock? Well, I'm gonna go with a kicker. Now I'll just play with you. I go do that. I go do that. I go do that. No, seriously, I'm going to go with Dawson Pierre out of Concordia. Okay, Dawson Pierre. Tell us a little bit about him, Coach Phil, and why you went with him. Dawson Pierre brings more to that defense than most young guys will on a defense, for one. You already have a Dexter Lawson. You got a Jamal Peters. You got a Stavros. You That is where their bread and butter is, man, creating turnovers. Dawson brings hits. 
He can play inside the box. He can be a hybrid. He can do a little bit of everything. Now, when we saw with Montreal, we saw that they had their X factor was Reggie Stubblefield. Reggie played so many different positions. It created different schemes for them to be successful. And you want to bring a young guy in who can learn from some vets, especially a Jamal Peters, a Stavros, a Dexter Lawson, guys like that, and prep him for the future, man. Because when when they did go to the great those great cups, man, they got turnovers, my brother. I like it, coach. I like it. So um, maybe someone that maybe wasn't um, anticipated going in the first round, but I like the pick. Um, I like the explanation as well. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, rivalry, rivalry that you got going on with Scamilton Scam uh, in the Hamilton area and uh, what went into the kind of uh, inspiration of wanting to swap with uh, Jason? Anytime I can sit there and have some fun with Scamilton fans and troll them a little bit, you know I'm going to take my opportunity, my brother. I absolutely love it. I was uh, prepared for the costume. I was expecting nothing less out of uh, Mr. Coach Bill, that's for sure. Um, I love the little 8,405 days since 99. It's been a long time, my guy. Um, I feel bad for uh, Jason having to be the good sport here and having to uh, surrender Hamilton, go to Winnipeg, and hear all his uh, this banter going on about his squad. But uh, good sport, Jason. But Jason or before we put Jason on the clock here in Winnipeg, Coach, um, you know, a man that doesn't sleep. Can you tell us a little bit about your content and everything you got going on? Um, it seems like every day you're releasing a video. I don't know how you do it, man. Um, like I said, the man that doesn't sleep, this guy puts out content um, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. Tell us a little bit about what you got going on. I've seen your uh, new Instagram page as well and uh, everywhere people can find your content. Oh, man, uh, getting ready for uh, – I'm going to be going to Edmonton this upcoming week to do a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Gino Lewis. I'm going to be doing uh, two sit-down interviews, one with Niles Morgan and one with the mayor of Edmonton, of Commonwealth, actually, correction, uh, Odell Willis. I've got so many different sit-down interviews coming up um, when I go on the road. I'm going back on tour. We're going to do the East Coast. I'm hitting Montreal, Ottawa. Uh, my first stop will be Scamilton, so be on the lookout for that one. Uh, doing a lot, man. Doing a lot, staying busy, and uh, she was trying to wreck the league. Awesome, man. Like I said, the guy that never sleeps, pumping out content on a daily basis. Uh, if you don't know, now you know. Coach Phil, go find him on YouTube, uh, Instagram, all that good stuff. Pumping out all a bunch of good content for the CFL and doing a bunch of good things. So uh, salute to you, Coach Phil. We will see you when Hamilton's back on the clock. Yes, so sir. we will go to uh, a good sport, a good friend of mine as well. Jason, thanks for joining us, buddy. Jason and Pussy's Huddle. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Cole. Um, you know, really looking forward to being here, and uh, this is fun. So, obviously, like I said, you had to be the good sport here. Uh, Coach Phil made the proposition. Uh, what do I need to do to, to get Hamilton from you? You were the good sport and just uh, gave it up willingly. Going to pick for uh, maybe not your favorite team, but somebody in the CFL that's been a powerhouse over the last few years here. Uh, maybe not a lot of holes to fill, but you can really maybe take a swing on maybe a player that you really like. Um, and maybe a player that you think can maybe really make an impact. So I know you're not a fan of Winnipeg, but are you ready to be officially put on the clock for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Jason? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think um, with the way the drafts played out, there's some interesting names that are still on the board here for uh, Winnipeg to pick. Uh, but ultimately, I'm going to go with a guy that early on in the process uh, was mocked uh, by a couple of people to go number one overall in this draft, and that is wide receiver Nick Mardiner out of Auburn, a six foot six receiver who uh, I think was uh, with uh, the University of Hawaii the year before, and he had a very productive season. Didn't play as much at Auburn, but a very physically talented receiver. And I think Winnipeg being one of those teams that um, starts two Canadian receivers with Wallatarski and Nick Dembski, um, eventually, you know, those guys are going to start getting older. Uh, they're going to need some insurance behind them. And I think that's a lot of the time, that's what the CFL draft is about. Um, not necessarily drafting starters, but getting guys that uh, can back up your starters and eventually become starters. And I think Marner could eventually fill that starting role currently held by Drew Wallatarski. I like to pick. And like you said, the guy that could have went a little bit higher, right? And probably has fallen down a few draft boards uh, based on maybe what we've seen some of the mock drafts out there. But um, I like to pick somebody that was um, a division one talent, like you mentioned, at the University of Auburn, um, can come in and maybe make an impact or maybe learn for a year or two and then really make an impact down the line and be someone that's 
uh, receiver that you can build upon. So I really like to pick. Um, I think a guy that can be a uh, really talented receiver just from uh, no really tape study, but seeing a few of his highlights on YouTube and stuff like that uh, seems like quite the athletic receiver and is maybe able to uh, bring some special uh, playmaking ability for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers down the road. So before we get out of here, Jason, um, we know we're taking a little bit of a breather from the channel right now, but what do you got going on at Hussey Huddle here before the CFL season gets uh, kicked off? Well, uh, like you said, I've been taking a bit of a break from the channel. I have some bigger life things going on. I recently started a new job, so that's been taking the bulk of my time recently. But I plan to get back into it with some season preview uh, content uh, coming up in the coming months here. I usually do uh, a couple videos per week during the season. So I do a predictions video and I do um, a weekly uh, recap uh, with a, it's like a collab with the Mark cast. Um, another bigger um, uh, CFL channel. So um, look forward to that, doing that again this season. And uh, we did, of course, uh, a big Grey Cup uh, show um, last year at the Grey Cup in Hamilton with the Mark Cast. So that was a lot of fun and um, looking forward to being a part of that again this year in BC. We'll see you then, buddy. We'll see you then. Um, and we will see you back when Winnipeg is on the clock later in the draft. Jason, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers select Nick Mardner, receiver out of the University of Auburn. So. It is a long wait when you're the Grey Cup champions down at the end of the round, but that's okay when you're the Grey Cup champions. Uh, bringing in Cliffy Pine now for to represent the Montreal West. Cliffy, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, as always. And please, let's make it clear, it is the reigning, defending, undisputed Grey Cup champion, Montreal Alouettes. If you're going to say it, say it right. Please and thank you. Absolutely. My apologies to the reigning, defending Montreal Alouettes. Uh, but Cliffy, thank you so much for joining us. I know you've been looking forward to this as well. Um, how I know, like I mentioned, it's a little bit of a pain kind of waiting to the end of the round, but um, that's a nice sacrifice you're willing to make when you're wearing a little bit of jewelry. Um, has it been a kind of maybe a little bit of a, some of my guys here slipping or has the board kind of maybe fell the way that maybe you would have liked here? Uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, there's a, lo a lot of ways I was going to go with this because Personally, I didn't feel like the Alouettes had any glaring needs. It was simply a matter of they're in a position where they could choose the best player available. And I thought to myself, okay, well, can you do both? Can you find someone that is the best player available plus fill a need as well? And as we got the news this week of Sean Lemon deciding to take his retirement, which kind of threw us all for a loop because he was signed, sealed, delivered, ready to play again this year. And I thought, great, you know, this is a veteran presence that was – Arguably one of the main reasons why the Alouettes won the Grey Cup this year, this past year was because of the play of Sean Lemon. Uh, but he decided to uh, call it a career and, you know, can't be mad at that. I mean, he, he definitely helped us get to the promised land, so he can't be mad about that. So I thought to myself, which what are some needs immediately? And I thought to myself, okay, defensive line, yes, the Alouettes have made quite a few moves, but you know what? This is going to be a case of the rich getting richer as far as I'm concerned. So... With the ninth overall pick of the 2024 CFL draft, on behalf of the Montreal Alouettes, I am pleased to select Luke Brubacher, defensive line from Laurier, or Wilfrid Laurier University. Or is it just, no, sorry, it's just Laurier University, isn't it? I, I believe so. I'm not too familiar with my OUA schools. I know that would probably be a Connor thing, but I believe it's it's Laurier University. But um, like the pick, Cliffy, tell us a little bit more. Well, I mean, he was arguably one of the best players in the Combine uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, his measurables are outstanding. Uh, and as I said, this Montreal Alouettes defensive line is arguably one of the best in the league. They've got some incredible Canadian talent with Isaac Berglund, Isaac Berglund Derek Wigan, uh, Luke, uh, Brock Gowanlock, sorry. And now adding Luke Brubacher to that list is just going to, as far as I'm concerned, the rich get richer. I mean, this is a, a chance for this team to improve itself. Uh, I think the defensive line is a category where, where I feel like the Alouettes are never truly happy, even though they've, they won the great cup and they had an outstanding defensive line to finish the season with. I feel like this is a position where they just keep tinkering with and keep trying to work and make better and better and better. And I think adding Luke Brubacher and his immeasurables, as far as I'm concerned, that's going to be one of the things that's going to help the Alouettes possibly repeat as great cup champions this year. Awesome. I like the pick. Um, Lou Brubacker, like you said, a guy that blew up the combine, um, showed a good, good season this past season though, as well at, at Laurier, um, a guy that has been uh, shooting up mock draft boards here in the last few weeks after the, after the combine, 
Um, I think somebody that can come in and definitely uh, contribute one on special teams right away and then be able to maybe um, be built into something that's a, uh, a really nice force in the CFL at, at edge rusher and be something that's uh, be able to use uh, for the Montreal Alouettes. So, Cliffy, that will wrap up the first round of our CFL mock draft. So I appreciate you for joining us. So before we get out of the first round and move officially to the second round, I believe some of the fellas here uh, want to kind of do a review. So what we're going to do here on the fly is I'm going to bring in uh, maybe two or three guys here per round and kind of get their thoughts on maybe some of uh, maybe a guy that they like that uh, somebody else selected from them. They would have hoped would have fell to their next pick or something like that. Uh, maybe talk a little bit more about their pick. A surprise pick, maybe someone that they didn't see going uh, quite in the first round, or maybe it's just a pick that they like. So we will start at number one with Andrew and bring in Andrew from the Turf District. Andrew, number one, I will ask you maybe uh, who is somebody that you had your eye on that you liked that got selected uh, after your pick? Uh, well, the boss uh, that uh, Mark stole into Calgary was one that I thought might be hanging around for this next pick for me. Um, just hoping that we would be able to get, you know, a little bit of that defensive back help as well, because we uh, we do have some guys back there. So um, that was kind of where I was heading. But uh, but Mark, uh, obviously, with uh, <laughs> had had the snag on me on that one. Awesome. So. We will go to number pick here, number two, sorry, um, and go to Shane. Shane, who is somebody in the first round that maybe you liked uh, the value at where they got selected? Um, in the first round, obviously, it's a little bit hard to say, you know, because you, you never know. A lot of time, maybe in real life, uh, some of these first round guys are kind of NFL guys. It seems like a lot of these guys are uh, CFL guys that are probably going to be there day one at training camp. Um, so who's maybe a guy that you looked at throughout these first nine picks that you liked uh, the value at where they got selected? So to be honest, uh, Cliffy kind of took my guy for the second round. Uh, Burbacher is, is, he's nice. He's nice with it. Um, his numbers don't really explode off the page at you when you look at him at a face value. If you look up his numbers at Wilfred Lurie, they're decent, but they're not like top end talent, you know, dominant that you would think of. But his measurables, how he performed at the combine, even just his fundamentals, everything about him as a player. If you're looking for the next ratio breaker defensive end, like kind of your next Matthew Betts, he's going to be the guy. Um, so for him to, to get picked at nine, at nine by Montreal, I'm not shocked. I'm annoyed. Um, but I think that's a great pick for Montreal. Again, like Cliffy said, the rich get richer. Um, I don't think he's going to be a week one starter. He may not see much starting time year one, but he'll definitely make an impact on special teams. And, if he sees, uh, if he sees time in rotation, he should be an impact player. Um, so Montreal again, rich gets richer, and I'm annoyed that that Cliffy took him at nine. I was, I was set. I was like, oh man, I one more pick to go because I didn't think, uh, didn't think Edmonton was gonna take him. I didn't think Andrew was gonna gonna take him. So I'm like, oh man, he's he's right there for for grabbing. And then Cliffy runs uh, runs spoiler on it. So a very intriguing prospect, like you mentioned, had a very good pro uh, combine, tested very well, um, and a very intriguing prospect to see how, what he turns into down the line. So let's go to Saskatchewan and see what Bruce thinks about. Um, I know Bruce, like like I was talking to you a little bit before, uh, you put up put out your uh, yourself a mock draft on your uh, blog. Who was maybe a, a pick that surprised you or maybe that you liked at maybe a certain team that you think maybe fits that maybe uh, went with maybe some around maybe your mock draft or something you were thinking of? Yeah, so I was just uh, I was pretty surprised to see uh, I think it was uh, Nick Mardner go so low. Like I thought someone would for sure pick him up uh, sooner than he than he went. But uh, he I think he dropped to seven or eight. Was it seven or eight? I believe uh, eight. I believe to the yeah. Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah. Number eight of the first round. That is for sure like a larger drop than I thought there was going to be on that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So to wrap up the first round, Joel DeBlanco, linebacker, goes to Edmonton. Kevin Mitel, receiver, goes to Ottawa. Gabe Wallace, offensive lineman, goes to Saskatchewan. Uh, Benjamin Labros, defensive back, goes to Calgary. Dell Duncan Busby to Toronto, receiver. Nathan Dumoulin Duguay, offensive lineman to BC. Dawson Pierre. Uh, goes to Hamilton, Nick Marner, receiver, goes to Winnipeg, Lou Brubaker, goes to Montreal to end the first round. 
we will go back to the top of the order. We will go to Edmonton to select the first pick of the second round. Bring back in Andrew. Andrew, the Edmonton Elks are now on the clock in the second round for the first overall pick or the first pick in the second round. Who are you selecting? Well, this is a bit of a tough one, only just because Edmonton has a couple of spots where I think that they would be looking uh, for a player in this draft where you'd be looking at somebody probably to develop at receiver because now that you've brought in Curly Gittins Jr., you have Gavin Cobb, uh, you you might want a guy that's then going to come in that could develop under those guys to take on that Canadian receiver spot. Uh, I haven't exactly been uh, quiet about the fact that I feel like they could use some upgrades on the offensive line. Not that you're going to be able to pull uh, a guy out of the draft and immediately start him, but you you do want to be able to build somebody into that position. Uh, and right now, Edmonton is starting four Canadian offensive linemen, at least at this point, until we get to the uh, uh, training camp and kind of see where things land. So a couple of different ways that we could go. Uh, I feel like at this point, uh, I want to look and see, um, see if you see if you can kind of combine a little bit of that need with another guy that I think is just a good overall pick. Uh, so with our first round in the our first pick in the second round, there you go. I can learn how to talk. Um, <laughs> I'm going to select on behalf of the Elks uh, offensive lineman George Una from Windsor. Um, and I a little bit different for a Chris Jones guy because he's only six foot two. Usually he likes the six, four, six, six guys. Um, but this is a guy who likes pass blocking. Uh, this is a guy that is um, uh, versatile and obviously seems to be a bit of a character guy from reports from uh, the combine. So uh, I'm going to go with George Una and, and see if we can help prop up that uh, offensive line a little bit. That's the first one that kind of got me right in the gut and you know, oh. twisted, twisted the sword a little bit. Uh, had my eyes on Mr. George Una, uh, offensive lineman at the University of Windsor. Like the pick, Andrew. Versatile offensive lineman, like you mentioned, a guy that uh, built a little bit more on his resume at the combine um played on a nice uh offensive line that kind of uh we've ran the ball very well at the university of windsor um i think will be a very good piece in edmonton I hate to say it but um like the like the addition there we will go to round two pick two ottawa we will bring in jason or sorry jason it's shane shane you are now on the clock what are you doing with the second pick in the second round Shane, you might be uh, muted there. With uh, with Luke going at nine, kind of threw my uh, my list into uh, a frenzy right now. I mean, there's a couple of different directions Otto can go to here at uh, at eleven. Um, there's really not a position that screams need uh, for for Ottawa. I mean, obviously you can always add more O line, but they've gone so O line heavy. I don't know how many more you can put into the pipeline to develop at this moment um, with Pelios, Hogan, uh, Hogan Sandon, and uh, Bull over the last two drafts. There's not much wiggle room there. Um, so honestly, I'm going to double dip into the receiver, uh, and I'm going to take, uh, for the Red Blacks, I'm going to take a, a Jew, a Jew, or a Joy, a Joy. I can't, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I apologize if I butchered it. Um former Clemson wide receiver. Uh, I believe he went to South Florida. Uh, just double dipping to the receiver category for, for Ottawa. You can never have too many solid, productive Canadian receivers in this in this day and age. So I, I'm going to get going with him at number two, right? Number 11. I, lo I like it. A very intriguing prospect. Um, like you mentioned, somebody that went to the University of Clemson um, and then kind of got a little bit of question marks at the combine. I know he was a little bit um, unhappy about some of the things that were said about him, but um, I think it's somebody that can be an intriguing prospect. Um, didn't show too well in the 40-yard dash, but I think somebody that has been known as somebody that can be a deep threat. And uh, I like the pick and double dipping at the receiver position and taking swings at the receiver board, and hopefully one of them will stick. Um, and I, I, like, I like the addition, honestly. Um, so, Shane, anything else before we go on to the next pick of the CFL draft? No, not at all. I think this, at this point, your teams are kind of filling for back-end roster spots, so going to be interesting to see what the rest of the guys go with. Awesome. So let's go to Saskatchewan. Let's bring back in Bruce. Bruce, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are now on the clock at 
second round, third overall. Who are you selecting? All right, so uh, gonna go back to um, what um, what Connor said is uh, I'm gonna go for a bit of an under the radar pick, uh, and I'm gonna be taking uh, Jackson Sombach out of the University of Regina Rams to play like DB. It, I like it. Tell us a little bit more about him. Uh, a guy that I had on the podcast, obviously, obviously yeah. small little plug there. Um, and a guy that I think can maybe hopefully uh, try to hopefully earn some special team reps. But tell, him, tell us a little bit more about him. Obviously, you're from Saskatchewan and, and like the guy from Regina. So tell us a little bit more about him and why you selected him. So um, I've had like I, a chance to like meet him in real life as well because um, I, I went to a Regina Rams camp uh, to you know, get better at football because I'm still playing. And uh, he he's like a like a really cool guy to be honest. And like I saw his combine and he had a good forty time and I, I thought he performed really well. And I I would like to have uh, a local guy uh, come and play for the Riders like Jackson Ford did. I was gonna say a teammate of his obviously at the University of Regina, uh, Jackson Ford the previous year who got selected. Um, so I like it. I think a guy that can contribute on special teams. Hopefully he's on a little bit of a shorter side. That's probably a lot of the question marks, right? A guy that um, obviously blew up and kind of came onto the scene after the Invitational Combine, um, put up a lot of good scores. Obviously, it was one of eight guys that were selected to go to the National Combine, put up pretty much the similar numbers um, as he did the previous week in terms of uh, how he did testing-wise. Um, and then, obviously, a guy that's going to compete, right? He, he's a little bit uh, limited when it comes to his stature, but a guy that was, uh, you know, he, sh he showed up in a few plays, breaking up passes on Sunday when they had the, the live stream there. So... Um, I like to pick, and I think a guy that will definitely get um, energized, uh, a boost for, from playing at home and kind of being uh, more comfortable in his environment, obviously playing in that stadium uh, for most of his university career as well. So um, I like to pick, obviously, episode 32 of the uh, Canadian Football Fanatics podcast. Uh, I guess I had on Jackson Sombach, so go check that out. Like the pick. Let's go to Calgary now. Fourth overall in the second round. Mark's joining us once again. Mark. You are now on the clock with not only, I believe, I believe the next two picks. Two picks, back yeah. To back to back. So you have 13th and 14th overall. Let's start with number 13 for the Calgary Stampeders. Yeah. Number 13 is their own pick. 14 is a byproduct of the Bo Levi Mitchell trade. So just so people are aware of what's uh, going on. At number 13, I've got Mike Chris Ike from Delaware. Uh, this is a position I can see him similar to what Ante Elitre did here for a lot of years. Uh, they do need some help in that sort of fullback running back position because uh, William Longley is uh, getting a little older and uh, nearing the end of his career. And I just think it's an element that he would bring to the offense. And I think he's a guy that could help the team. So I've got Michael Chris Ike, uh, you know, tied for first in the 40, but uh, he's a guy that I've seen enough to uh, think he would fit in with the Calgary Stampeders. The next one in the last one for me, <laughs> because there's no third round pick, is uh, John B O S S E from the University of Calgary, an offensive lineman. Why I like John is because, uh, first of all, use this pick as a bit of a what would we call it there, sort of a draft and follow kind of guy. He's a bit of project. I don't dispute that. He hasn't had a lot of experience, but there's never a circumstance we can go wrong picking a Canadian offensive lineman. So I think he's a guy that could develop. He'd be in a familiar setting because, you know, the Calgary Dinos and Calgary Stampeders share the same facility. And obviously the Stampeder coaches would have seen them. They only have to look out their window to find, watch him work out. So He's a bit of a project. Maybe it's a bit of a reach, but uh, he's going to be my uh, uh, second pick, kind of as a project guy. Another guy that's staying in the uh, province, obviously, playing his university ball at the University of Calgary, staying in that stadium as well. Another like the uh, previous pick there, a guy that's uh, familiar and comfortable. Like you mentioned, a guy that's probably a project, but um, a guy that's looked at highly upon from scouts. I believe he was on the uh, scouting bureau top 20, I believe, at number 17 in the fall yeah. edition. Um, so I like that prospect. I like that pick. I think a nice swing at offensive tackle. Um, I believe as well he was playing a little bit of offensive guard, if I'm not mistaken, at the combine. So maybe uh, he's able to fit in at a numerous uh, positions on the offensive line. So like both picks. I believe it was Michael Chrisike at 13, John Bosse Busse, however they pronounce it. I don't want to butcher yeah. it as well. Right. Uh, offensive lineman at pick number 14. Yeah, and Mark, I, I think Boss has a has a good upside. Uh, that's what I think. And if they're patient. Um, We'll see. 
Awesome. A lot of upset. I believe a former basketball player, so very athletic. Uh, Mark, like you mentioned, I believe that was your last pick of the mock draft. Three picks you get, but it was a ton of fun. Um, before you do get out of here, because you don't have to stick around, you're more than welcome to stick around and hear some of the picks. But uh, tell us a little bit about what you got going on and what you're looking forward to with camp starting in about a month and then preseason games a little bit after that. Yeah, well, we're going to be back with our broadcast crew. I broadcast the games on CHQR Calgary, which is a chorus radio station. We've had the right since 1992, and I've been broadcasting Stampeder games since uh, 1996, and uh, a former all-star in the CFL, Greg Peterson, a safety as my color man. Uh, we're the, he's been doing it since 1997. We're the longest-serving broadcast tandem in the history of the league. So that's kind of exciting and, you know, looking forward to a better season from the Stampeders. Uh, they were six and 12 last year. It did not go. Well. There's a lot of reasons why they were six and 12, but they've got to be better. I haven't won a playoff game since the gray cup in 18. So, uh, you know, that's been noted a little bit. So uh, that's what we're getting ready for. We'll be at camp all the time watching uh, who does what and where and uh, quite looking forward to it. Awesome, Mark. Big fan of what you got going on, and thank you so much for uh, jumping on and having some fun with us here today. Yeah, I'm going to stick around, too. This is a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Okay. So let's get back to BC, and I will try to bring in my co-host because I know he's been uh, backstage here. I know he is here somewhere. Blake, can you hear me? How are you doing, my friend? Oops. Yeah, I can hear you, Cole. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Hopefully everybody else at home uh, and backstage can hear you very well. I'm um, not too sure if you picked up who we got at number or uh, at number six in the first round, offensive lineman Nathan uh, Dumlin Duguay. We're going to kind of have a nice little, uh, I guess, look into the war room here, folks, because uh, Blake and I have had a little bit of discussion, but haven't really cemented who we want to go with, especially how the board went. So, uh, Blake, I guess I will give it up to you to kind of go with and who voice maybe who you want to go with, and then I will – uh, maybe try to persuade you, or we can agree on maybe a position that we want to go with here. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to pick uh, Kevin Clercius from uh, the University of Connecticut, I believe. Uh, he's a wide receiver, and uh, the Lions need one of those right now. Uh, I think I have an idea of where you might go in our uh, pick here in a couple minutes. But uh, if you guys remember, in the West Final last year, uh, TJ Lee, and I believe it was Keon Hatcher, was it not, Cole? Correct. Yeah, they uh, they both tore their ACLs, so they're going to be out for uh, quite a bit. I believe it was Achilles. Of, or their Achilles, sorry. But they're both going to be out for quite a while this season. So the Lions are going to need a uh, receiver, and I really like Clercius to step up and maybe grab that uh, spot left by Hatcher. And it also looks like Lucky Whitehead isn't going to return to the BC Lions. So uh, – there might be a couple open receiver spots. Um, you and I were really excited. We're going to be up in Kamloops watching some of those battles here in about a month's time. So I really like uh, Clercius. What do you think about that pick, Cole? I like it. I'm glad you went to uh, receiver as they were kind of getting scooped up off the board. Um, didn't have a, didn't have a lot of receivers down here for kind of my uh, top 30, if you will. And he was the last on the board. So I'm glad we scooped him up. Um, I, I believe a guy that probably is more likely to come in and probably contribute on special teams a little bit more right away. Um, I know he did that at his time at University of Connecticut as well as being a good blocker. So I'm um, excited to see. And I think a guy that um, can kind of Justin McKinnis and Javon Katoy being the two Canadians that will probably likely start in front of him. If any of them go down, I think you can kind of lean on secu uh, Kevin Seclusius to kind of come in and be in a, a nice valuable depth option option off the bench. Another good blocker like Katoy. Um, another big body, and I believe he ran uh, a pretty decent 40-yard uh, dash, maybe of Connors uh, in the chat. I believe it was like a 4.66 uh, six, six or something like that for at 6'2", uh, over 200 pounds. So um, I believe it was it, it was a decent 40-yard um, dash, if I'm not mistaken. So I um, like the pick and able to scoop up maybe our last receiver on our big board, if that's what you want to call it. But, Blake, thank you so much for jumping back on here, buddy. I know you're busy at work. Um, I will get off here and we will go to Hamilton. So Blake, we will talk to you in a bit, buddy. Let's go and bring in all the antics, <laughs> all the entertainment, <laughs> what everybody's here to see. The mayor is <laughs> Hamilton, Coach Phil. Coach Phil selecting at round two, pick number 16. Coach, I know it's been a little bit. You've been waiting. You've been letting uh, you know guys fall to you and kind of had your eye on uh who might be following you i don't know if there's an evil twinkle in your eye or if there's a, a maybe uh you're up to something kind of twinkle in your eye but uh who is something that maybe or a guy that you have your eyes on and who are you selecting with uh this pick i will now officially 
put you on the clock. I mean, I could be petty and I could make a a, a, a petty pick, but now nah, I actually like the pick I'm going to make right here. I'm keeping it in the trenches with this one. Uh, I'm going to go with Tyson Hergott. You, I know you had him on the you had him on the show. I believe. Talk a little bit more. Tell us a little bit bit about him. Tyson, man, he he's he can he can be considered a versatile D lineman. He can play on the edge and play inside, but I also like the fact that he would, like I said, with Dawson Pierre, man, you want to have him around vets for in the future, man. They do still have a young defense, man. Around the age of D lineman, uh, 27, 28, and I believe 29 is kind of like the range of what they have. You have Casey Sales, you've got Jamal Davis, you've got uh, my guy Cedric Wilcox, but you're also going to need somebody that can possibly play that you can make a hybrid and make him play with the linebackers, man. They're, they're a little lacking in the, in the linebacker field, and you want to keep that box strong. So I think Tyson could be the guy. He's got a motor. He's going to get tackles. He did have a game where he did have 10 tackles. He fluctuates between about between five and seven tackles a game, but that's what you want from a guy in the trenches. Stuff the line, be a run stopper. But if you can get him to also learn how to drop into coverage a little more, which I think that's an area where he can improve, my God, it'll be, it'll be happy days in Scambleton. The the second sore that's been uh, twisted in, in, the, in the back, but love the pick, Coach. Um, a guy that's an absolute freak on the field. I know he had a decent combine as well. Kind of got a little bit lost in the shuffle with, with Luke Brubecker, kind of getting a little bit of the praise and stuff like that of the combine. But um, obviously the production's there. I believe he had double-digit sacks, a mm. whole whack of TFLs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I know a guy that you had on uh, deep in the game, if I'm not mistaken, was able to kind of pick his brain, learn, learn, a, little, learn a little bit more about him, um, kind of hear his story. So I know um, a little bit more goes into that pick as well. So um, for all the antics, for all the entertainment, Coach Phil goes with a banger of a pick uh, in the second round. Another pick that I absolutely love. Um, a guy that I think will will kind of translate. Um, I know Luke Brubaker kind of got that Matthew Betts kind of comparison, but I think Tyson Hergott has just as so much opportunity as well. Um, I'm interested to see when we maybe recap the round here and kind of get maybe uh, Connor to, from uh, CFP here to talk a little bit more about him. Um, I know being able to watch uh, Tyson and Luke at uh, out there in Ontario. So, Coach, love the pick. Let's go to the next pick here with, Jason from Hussey's Huddle, we will put on Winnipeg on the clock now. Jason, bringing you back in for your second pick here. And uh, you're about to get another pick as well, so you're about to be on the clock twice here. Round two, pick 17, Jason. Um, who are you selecting for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? So I'm going to go with a guy that I was actually considering selecting with my first pick in the in the first round, and that is defensive lineman Daniel Okpoko from San Diego State University. Uh, he didn't play a whole lot the first three years in college, but then his uh, last year he actually had a pretty productive season uh, there at the Division One level. And so I think he's a guy that he's around 275 pounds, so I think he could play inside and out at the defensive line at the um, uh, Canadian Football League level potentially. Uh, Winnipeg obviously is dealing with the loss of Jackson Jeffcoat. Uh, to retirement this offseason. Uh, they drafted Anthony Bennett with a very high pick, I believe a first or second round pick uh, last year or the year before. So uh, again, a little bit of insurance behind him if uh, they need um, to make that a spot uh, for their ratio along the defensive line. And of course, Jake Thomas getting older as well. So uh, at the end of the day, I think that's why I'm going to go with Daniel Okpoko, who, uh, <laughs> Daniel Okpoko here. Awesome. I like to pick, I believe, a div Division One guy played down at San Diego State, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think he can kind of be like a little bit of a Francis Bemi type. I believe around 275-ish pounds can kind of kick inside as well as play on the edge. Um, uh, a guy definitely that I had uh, eyes on, but um, I like to pick Jason, like you mentioned, Anthony Bennett being selected for Winnipeg, if I'm not mistaken, last year in the first round, if, first or second round, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I uh, like to pick adding edge rushers can never hurt especially in the Canadian, uh, in the CFL now, if they can kind of be ratio breaking edge rushers here now for be able to find some of these guys coming out, I think can only add value for your team. So let's go to Edmonton, if I'm not mistaken, with the last pick of the second round before we get the uh, na the national uh, re rewarded picks. Andrew, you're back on the clock here at the end of the second round, 18th overall. Who are you selecting? You are now on the clock. All right. Well, I first want to say that he grabbed that Opoco right because that, that was my pick. I was all prepared to pick Opoco, and then uh, 
got uh, snagged out by Winnipeg. That is, uh, that, that's a little frustrating. Luckily, I have a couple of uh, of uh, backup options here. Um, again, uh, I was talking about it earlier, uh, and and Cole, you had mentioned it, where the 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 kind of the top receivers are kind of off the off the board, uh, you know, in in Mattel and uh, Clarius. Did I say that right, Claire? I, I believe so. I'm not exactly sure how yeah. to say that as well. So, uh, Perseus and Mardner, um, if, if one of those was available, then definitely that would be where I'd be landing on this. But, um, but because of that, um, and, and a lot of the guys that, uh, it seems like Mark, like had all of my notes and just picked all the guys that I wanted. <laughs> he went, he got, to, he got LeBros, he went to Bose, like those, those were ones that definitely I was going to, uh, I was hoping would fall down to this particular pick still being in the second round, but uh, not not so much luck on those. So uh, instead, uh, on behalf of the Elks, uh, we will be picking another offensive lineman dipping into that uh, realm once again uh, and going with uh, Christy Nakanu from Washington State. Um, and I, I think that's a chance for, for them to uh, develop yet another guy. Um, again, not exactly the size we're used to, um, but, uh, but I think that, uh, he, he would be able to force up into that, uh, plat pass block or sorry, run blocking for, uh, Kevin Brown very pretty quickly. Yes. A guy that I believe is a converted deep lineman over to the offensive line side, um, played at the, wa uh, Washington state, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So, um, I like the going offensive line pick. You can never go wrong in the CFL draft trying to bolster your offensive line and add national, uh, offensive linemen that are being able to uh, contribute in a few ways on the offense. So I like the pick. We will head out to BC once again. I will bring in my co-host, Blake. BC gets the – I believe this is the first pick of the um, na the rewarded picks that went to uh, BC and Winnipeg for playing the most nationals uh, last, this past season. So – BC and Winnipeg getting, I believe it was for the, um, what took place for the, uh, um, what was called like the, the regional picks. I forget exactly what the name of it was called. Um, the, um, that you couldn't pick outside your, I'm sure somebody in the chat will, will kind of chime in here, but uh, BC and Winnipeg getting uh, rewarded two picks to end the second round. BC getting the first one at round two, pick 19, Blake. Um, I, I'm going to take this one and leave the last one for you, but we will kind of, like I said, have a live look into the war room here and chat a bit about it. Um, kind of, kind of tough where kind of uh, really deciding on the fly here where I want to go. Some of these offensive linemen that I would have liked here, kind of uh, maybe guys I would like to look down the road. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to go offensive line here. I think we're going to go maybe uh db because some of the d linemen are off the board so if you're kind of agreeing with that because i think like you <laughs> mentioned uh keon hatcher tj lee carrying their achilles i think you're going to be okay with uh hopefully filling that void of you know maybe uh a, a national has to step into that role and maybe you're you're one you're one play away from having to play another national behind you kind of being in use of that racial uh kind of how your roster is already built so um i think we're going to go with christoph boy you at the University of Laval. We're going to double dip uh, from Laval, um, a guy that played all over the secondary, a very athletic guy that can, um, I think, contribute in special teams right away for sure. In these later rounds now, as you get into the second, third, and fourth rounds here, you're going to want guys that for sure can contribute um, on special teams, a guy that I think can maybe contribute at safety. Um, I'm not too sure if he's going to be quite athletic to, to really contribute at corner and or maybe half. So I think maybe a guy that's going to probably come in and hopefully – uh, try to contribute at safety behind maybe an Adrian Green or something like that, and a guy that will definitely contribute on special teams right away, um, plays with a high motor. Um, a guy that I'm really looking forward to, I think a guy like Ryan Phillips getting on, getting his hands on and being able to bring him into the system, kind of learn the system a little bit more, and then hopefully maybe in year two or three he's really able to excel down the line. So we're going to take another University of Laval uh, prospect here with Christoph Boyu, defensive back. Blake, what do you think about the pick, buddy? We're adding offensive lineman, receiver, and now a defensive back to the fold. Yeah, I really like the pick, Cole. Uh, if you hadn't uh, taken the pick here for us with the BC Lions, that's exactly who I was going to take as well. So uh, we kind of agree on that one. So uh, I guess that's a good thing when we're uh, co-GMs, if you will, for today at least. But yeah, he's, a, as you mentioned, and as I mentioned with our first pick of the second round, um, TJ Lee and 
Keon Hatcher, they're going to be out for the year. So as you mentioned here a minute ago, it looks like Adrian Green might step into that spot left by um, TJ Lee for a minute, or at least uh, till at least halfway through the year, if not longer. But then you're going to need someone to back up Adrian Green. So I really like the uh, pick and bull you. And um, as much as it pains me to say this, you can't really go wrong when you pick anyone from Laval because it seems like that uh, university, they just churn out Vanier Cup champions and draft picks galore year after year. So I think that's a really good pick for us. Yeah, so let's go to Winnipeg. Let's bring in Jason. Blake, we'll talk to you in the third round, buddy. Jason, you get the second pick rewarded for the most nationals playing snaps last year, I believe, um, is what these picks are awarded to. So who are you going with with this pick? So with the, um, uh, what is it, the third? What uh, pick 20th, are we on? 20th, 20th pick. 20th pick um, in the, the second round. I'm going to go with offensive lineman Daniel Johnson from Purdue. Offensive lineman, uh, six foot six. Uh, 330 pound offensive lineman. Uh, what stands out to me about him is that he's one of the rare guys that uh, projects more as a tackle at the next level, um, which you don't often see in um, the CFL draft every year. So um, we're going to take him. Obviously, uh, they dealt with the loss of Jamarcus Hardrick um, this offseason. They're probably going to be probably going to be starting an American in that spot uh, this year. But I think um, at the end of the day, it's good to have options in terms of ratio flexibility. Uh, they also could just use another Canadian body um, along the offensive line. So we're going to go with uh, Daniel Johnson here. I like it. Offensive lineman can never hurt, like I mentioned, uh, especially going to Winnipeg and adding to that uh, room. And hopefully someone's able to stick at offensive tackle down the road here to maybe develop something that's able to take over for the future. So, Jason, that will wrap up the second round. Um, to kind of wrap up the second round or review the second round, I'm going to bring in Connor O'Neill, CF, CFP. Connor, judging from the second round, maybe who's a pick that uh, you like? If you, if you want me to recap, George Una going at 10, Jiwa Ju going at 11, Jackson Sombach at 12, Michael Chrislike 13, John Bose 14, Kevin Seclusius 15, Tyson Hergott 16, Daniel Akpoko 17, Kristen Nakanu 18, Christophe uh, Boyu. 19 and Daniel Johnson at 20. Yeah, there was a, there was quite a few names in here that, that I liked, but I'll keep it brief. Uh, Jackson Sombach, um, you know, maybe some people watching this are like, oh, Sombach in the second round. Ah, say what you will about it, but I, I do like Sombach as a player. I think he he's, he's tenacious. Uh, he's a very versatile DB. He's going to be a, a guy that's going to get after the ball, and I think that's exactly what you're looking for in a guy that you can develop as – Kind of a special teams player and you know hopefully he does step in in you know a, a jackson ford type of way a Jaden dalkey type of way who knows uh but i do like jackson Sombach. i really like the calgary offensive lineman uh a john boss or john bose uh tyson hergott out of out of um tyson yeah, hergott, so out of the warriors program as well um yeah can you talk a little bit about i know it was in the first round but can you talk about the three edge rushers that we saw go off the, the board. I know Luke Brubecker went off in the first, uh, Tyson Hergott, and then Daniel Okpoko. Um, Maybe more specifically, because I know you got a little bit of a firsthand look at both the guys in the OUA. And uh, as you mentioned, a guy that kind of maybe got, uh, you know, maybe overshadowed from a guy uh, out in UBC here for the um, JP Metris trophy. But uh, specifically in Tyson and, and uh, Luke, how excited are you to see those guys at, in CFL camps and CFL uh, teams this season? Yeah, no, those those two guys uh, coming out of the the Kitchener Waterloo region are are two very talented defensive linemen. Um, you know, it's it's kind of wild that they play literally almost across the street from one another too. So uh, it, it adds to the rivalry there that you get to see at the OUA level, and it brings out the best in those two players. But to then see it grow and develop at the combine level as well, um, those those two players are are some pretty special defensive linemen, uh, especially you know in the OUA. Uh, I thought they were two, two of the you know not only best linemen in the OUA but but best players in the OUA. These are these are you're talking about game changers at the OUA level uh, with with these two players and uh, you know our Poco as well. He's, he's another defensive lineman that that was uh, you know highly touted coming into this draft process as well. So I think he's going to be an interesting one to watch too. Awesome, thank you so much, Connor. So let's go to Montreal since Cliffy's been waiting so long um, and probably. 
anxious for guys to maybe drop to him all the way in the last pick of the third round. But Cliffy, um, I know you haven't had a selection here in the second round, but who's maybe that, a guy that you were, were hoping to fall maybe in the third round or maybe just a prospect that uh, you were excited to see maybe any of the, uh, maybe a Laval guy like Christophe Boyou, um, but anyone that you maybe were excited or just kind of had your eye on here that went in the second round? I'm not going to lie. Uh, John Bossy is someone who very much impressed me during the CFL Combine. And we actually have him coming on to the Alouettes flight deck this coming week. So he's somebody who I think truly really would be a good fit with the Alouettes. And I am not surprised that he got taken uh, as quickly as he did. That's kind of the tough thing about the draft is you don't have a second round pick. So does Danny Machocha go out and get a second? Like, does he make a deal to get a second round pick in order to draft someone like that? Or does he go after a, a George Una who also got taken as well? Like those are two guys that I think not a desperate need for the Alouettes, but at the same time, someone that would be nice to have just because a couple of the offensive linemen that are on this team are getting a little long in the tooth and you got to start thinking about the future. And yes, the Alouettes do have some very good young studs on the defensive line, but once again, it's just one of those things where you just want to have that extra depth, that extra person to be able to say, okay, invite them to camp. Let's see what they can do. And even if you keep them on the practice roster, at least you know they're yours. And just in case someone decides to take an early retirement or it doesn't pan out for whatever reason, or they just ball out completely and basically force the older guys to sort of, you know, move on to a, another adventure. So to me, those, those are two guys that I would really like to see in Alouette's colors. And uh, again, not even surprised in the least that those guys got selected almost immediately. Awesome. So we are flying through things here. Cliffy, thank you so much. We will see you at the end of the, the third round. Let's go back to Winnipeg. Jason, I'll bring you in here, buddy. Um, and from a team that, you know, um, getting a little bit older, right? I know there's some question marks. They're losing a few guys, but they're retaining some pieces, adding, uh, you know, Brady Oliver coming back, Sean coming back, the, you know, kind of the ban on offense coming back. Um, but probably the most question marks are around, you know, some of the ages, you know, Zach getting up there, offensive lineman getting up there. I think you're adding a nice draft here to Winnipeg. So I'm not going to ask you maybe more so about the second round. I'm going to ask you more specifically about your class, your building, uh, obviously with Nick Marner, receiver, Daniel Apoko, defensive end, and then Daniel Johnson, offensive lineman. Who is maybe out of those three guys, maybe a guy that you were uh, super excited to draft and you were able to, obviously all three of them you're probably excited to draft, but maybe a guy that that's where you wanted him and he, and he fits right in. You think a guy that's going to be able to contribute to Winnipeg? Well, I think Nick Marner is going to be the guy that um, I'm most excited uh, to get because, uh, like I said, I think uh, he's been a guy that was very highly touted early on in this process as a much higher pick than what he ended up going in our mock draft here. So I think anytime you're able to get a premium athlete at the CFL draft, I think it's uh, very important. And I think that, um, you know, you can't teach things like six foot six and, uh, you know, a four, five, 40 yard dash at that speed. So I think that. At the end of the day, um, you know, Winnipeg, like I said, does start two Canadian receivers. So if one of those guys goes down, in particular, Drew Wallatarski, because Marner predicts, I think, as more of an outside receiver at the Canadian Football League level, I think, um, you know, that's a guy that can really step in and contribute uh, this year. Awesome, buddy. Thank you so much. We will chat with you when you're on the clock again. Let's go. To the first pick of the third round, folks, we are flying through this. Bring back in Andrew. Andrew. You are now on the clock with the third round, first pick of the third round. All right. Well, uh, with, I guess, the last pick in our mock draft for me, which, uh, you know, because that's the thing when you pick early, then you just get to listen to everybody else after that and watch them all pick the people that you hoped fall to you. But uh, it's okay. Uh, we uh, we're looking through, and uh, I do want to vary it up a little bit in the fact that uh, we've well, I guess not really, but uh, we picked a linebacker and an offensive lineman and another offensive lineman. And um, uh, I'm going to give Jason some kudos for picking Johnson because he was definitely on my list, being that he is a 6'6 guy, which is usually right up Chris Jones's alley. Uh, anybody who is 6'4 or taller usually hits his radar pretty quickly. Um, in this particular case, though, I'm going to uh, jump back into the linebacker pool. It does seem like we've been kind of building up line Canadian linebackers uh, in Edmonton in the, over the last little while. Uh, I think they're just trying to, you know, obviously it helps with special teams, but they're uh, athletic guys that can move into either that special team spot or play different spots in the linebacking role. And uh, we've always kind of been using that um, 
that weak side as a as more of a Canadian spot. So uh, with the first pick in round three, uh, we will pick uh, from South Alabama linebacker DK Bonhomme. Um, and uh, he does uh, quite quite a lot of athleticism, which is right up uh, Chris Jones and G. Roy Simons, uh, where they kind of want to land things um, and uh, should be able to be good, not only like linebacker position, but of course, like I said, the special teams should be able to contribute right away. So that's our pick. Yes, an athletic freak, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he played last year at South Alabama, but um, a Division One product um, and a guy that I think can contribute and a guy that I think Chris Jones has had his eye on at the Combine and stuff like that, uh, I think performed well at the Combine, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, can kind of come in and kind of fly around on special teams. Um, a guy that's, I, I want to say, like a pretty tall fellow for a linebacker and can really fly around, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, Andrew, before we get out of here, like you mentioned, the last pick of the Edmonton Elks in this draft, um, how do you like the class so far? Obviously, a few of these prospects here, and obviously none of this is official, but um, when it comes into a few weeks, maybe you see some of these guys and you're able to say, hey, maybe I picked him or maybe I had my eyes on him. Um, how are you, I guess, just kind of to, to kind of wrap things up for the Elks, how are you able to enjoy this today and just uh, enjoy this experience? Well, this was a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I'm i learning how to prep a little bit more for a draft. It's only the last couple of years that I really kind of got into it. And, and being able to go to the combine last year kind of cemented that for me where I wanted to be able to kind of learn a bit more. Uh, but, you know, guys like... Um, uh, um, Connor and and uh, Marshall and uh, you know my my Fine. compatriots Fine. with uh, Hodge and, and JC Abbott there Ben Grant like they're they're really deep into uh, knowing who these guys are uh, and it just impresses me that they can figure out uh, who who would kind of land where so uh, so I I love learning a little bit more like that and and this was a great uh, fun thing and a good way to learn a little bit more about some of these guys so uh, I appreciate you guys having it and running it. Yes, of course. And uh, one more small plug before we get out of here for everything you guys got going on at the Turf District before the season kicks off. I'm sure live shows, podcast episodes, all that good stuff. So tell us a little bit more. Yeah, 100%. We've got our uh, Tuesday night uh, every two weeks going into the season with uh, live shows. Uh, we usually have a guest on. We just had Damon Allen on last week, which was really great to chat with him. Uh, and uh, then as we get closer and as we get into training camp, we'll be at training camp and, and covering that. And then we go weekly during the season. Uh, catch us on a Tuesday night on all of your uh, live spots where you can join in the chat. And uh, the podcast usually comes out on a Wednesday, uh, usually evening. And uh, then we get a chance to catch up with everybody. And uh, I will put a little plug in here. If you're heading out to Edmonton at all, make sure you hit up the tailgate. Uh, we've got lots of uh, amazing things planned for the tailgate this year. So uh, come come join us for some football chats and, and fun before the game. Awesome. Look forward to follow along to all the good stuff you guys got going on, Andrew. And uh, appreciate you for joining us this afternoon and having some fun with us uh, doing some mocking. Nothing Absolutely. perfect, but a uh, whole lot of fun. So thanks so much, Andrew. And we'll chat cool. soon. You bet. So let's go to the nation's capital. Bring back in Shane. Shane, buddy, you've been sitting for a little bit. How you doing? Are you excited? And uh, we'll put Ottawa on the clock. Who are you selecting with the second pick in the third round? Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, very interesting to hear how some of these guys are picking. Um, I'm actually kind of shocked that we haven't heard some of the bigger names taken that are expected to see some NFL. Um, I'm glad you said something. NFL time. Um, even if it's a little bit of rookie camp, I'm kind of shocked that guys that, um, some of the bigger guys uh, aren't there, especially the, B the, the UBC guys. I figured you guys would have taken one of the two in those uh, – those extra picks there. Um, but like someone like Isaiah Adams, uh, Theo Johnson or Theo Benedict haven't been picked. Kind of surprising. So I'm going to change Kyle it up. Kyle Hergel as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be sticking on the offensive side of the ball because when you've gone, you only have 14 wins since 2019. And a big reason for that is your lack of offense. It's, it's kind of hard to pick anywhere else besides your offense. So I'm going to go all the way to Arizona, and I'm going to take the 6'5 tight end uh, Tanner McClacklin, or McClacklin um, out of Arizona. Um, he's kind of projected to be a day three guy. I know Theo Johnson. He was It was between those two that I was kind of debating between. Uh, I just like Tanner's game better. I think he'll translate better to a CFL-style game. Theo's expected to be a day two type pick. Tanner is expected to be – a late day three pick, so likelihood is you'll probably see him in the uh, 
in the CFL sooner than Theo, um, which if you're taking him at third in the third round, you kind of expect. But I think he's a guy at 6'5". He can stretch the field. He can work on the outside. He has the the ball skills. He has the route running. He can find the soft spots in the zone. He has a lot of very good tangibles that you can develop and work with. And I know tight ends don't have the greatest repertoire in our league. You go back to, to Jake Bird out of Hamilton. That didn't really work out well. Uh, but I think him, third round, he's worth the risk. Uh, again, there's not many holes that uh, the draft will fill for Ottawa. Taking him here in the third round is worth uh, worth keeping his rights going forward. And Ottawa adds to the offensive firepower once again. Two receivers, if I'm not mistaken, and now a tight end to add uh, to the complementary of weapons they already have. Obviously, uh, a little bit of a tear bringing over Dom Rimes, a few other big names in the offseason. So adding to the offensive side of the ball, I like it. Adding uh, just weapons all around and hopefully just guys that are able to come in and contribute uh, down the line. I believe Tanner on uh, CFPs, I believe top 10, I want to say, maybe around that five to seven range. Um, so a guy that probably will get drafted, but a guy that definitely might get an opportunity to come down in the CFL here and contribute in a matter of years once maybe he wears out his time in the NFL. So interested to see if he's able to come down here and show his athleticism as a kind of uh, inside, I would imagine kind of playing that, uh, I believe it's like a R kind of inside the, in, in the most inside receiver uh, slot. So like the pick, Shane, let's go to Saskatchewan here. But before we get you out of here, Shane, I believe that is actually your last pick of the draft. So um, tell the people a little bit about what you got going on at 13th Man Sports. What we got going on, obviously, a few things uh, in the works here before the season starts. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been a pleasure. This was a great time. I, first one we've done, first one I've been part of in the last couple of years, and I, I enjoy this stuff. Trying to get more into the the prospects. I know guys like Connor over at uh, CP. F C P C um, that's it. Um do a really good job. Um the the information isn't as easy to find as if they were NFL prospects. So trying to gather all the information that's available, going through other people's mock drafts. Um, I think I've studied John Hodges mock draft, both of the two that he's released, point one point oh and two point oh, about ten times over the last week. Uh trying to figure out okay, what what is it looking like? Um but for me, it's just it's going to be a lot of Red Blacks content. Going to be down at the training camp for for Ottawa, talk to the players, create more or give more of an insight to the day to day. So you can make sure it's going to be on Twitter, it's going to be on our website, it's going to be almost it should be on TikTok as well, potentially Instagram. So definitely a lot of a lot of things coming down. I know we're working on some stuff in the next couple of weeks. Um, a lot of other content creators that are working with us to get things going. So. I'm excited for 2024, and it should be a good time. Awesome, man. Looking forward to it. I don't think I've ever said to it, but uh, go check out everything Shane's got over at uh, 13th Man Sports. One, uh, I'm very thankful for everything Shane's kind of given to me and given me a platform opportunity to uh, allow me to learn and kind of write articles for the website. So um, go check out everything Shane's got going over there, cooking. Um, should be a good time as CFL is just around the corner. So, Shane, thanks so much for joining us, buddy. We'll chat soon, and uh, we will talk to you in a bit. So yeah, let's go to – Yes, of course. Let's go to Saskatchewan, and let's bring in Bruce. Bruce, you're now on the clock with hey, round buddy. three, pick number 23. How has the weight been, and who are you selecting? Uh, weight's been good. I've been uh, talking to my family about uh, who I'm going to pick here, and uh, I think Connor's going to like my pick here. He's going to like my pick again. Uh, so I will be selecting another University of Regina Ram, Deshaun Mims. Awesome. So University of Regina receiver right if i'm not mistaken receiver, yep uh, i believe he got uh heard of the combine running his 40 if i wasn't mistaken but a guy that was fairly productive at the can in the canada west season this past year um a guy that i think people are, are really intrigued guys like connor like you were saying uh, i want to say he's around like maybe six feet six foot one uh, yep. a little over 200 pounds runs pretty well um tell us a little bit more about him obviously another regina product um and why you selected him to come back home well, I mean, he's so gas. Uh, he's uh, I've got to see him play uh, for the Rams. Uh, I've uh, gone a few of the games that he was playing. I just like really felt that his uh, combine was unfair to him, uh, which I thought uh, gave me the opportunity to pick him now. So I think he'd be a sleeper pick uh, because of his combine performance because he, you know, got injured. So I think it's a I, I think he can for sure play at the CFL level. Uh, so. I would be excited to see him uh, play for Saskatchewan. Uh, also go to 
uh, the hometown Regina Saskatchewan football team. Love it, buddy. So last pick of the draft for you. I believe yeah. you went Gabe Wallace, Jackson Sombach, and now Deshaun Mims. Tell us a little bit about how you're feeling about your class. Uh, three picks only. And uh, – Tell us how you're feeling. Maybe a guy that maybe went off the board that you weren't able to select, or just tell us how you're feeling generally for, about the uh, mock. Yeah, so uh, I think the first pick that I was going to take, I was uh, like Gabe Wallace always in the back of my mind, but my original pick was going to be DeBlanco because I saw that uh, on the CFL website, he like Ferguson had him going at seven. So I was like, if he drops down that many, then I'm for sure taking him, but he didn't. So I went with Wallace. And I'm sure he'll do great at the CFL level, if not uh, the NFL level. Uh, and then Sombach and Mims were just, uh, I mean, they, they're they both good players and I, I like them both, but I i really like the hometown connection. Uh, like Brayden Lenny is a hometown guy. Uh, Ford's a hometown guy. Like, I feel like if like you build the football culture, uh, like with hometown guys, you, you really bring, uh, some positive energy energy to the locker room. And that's something that the Riders have been lacking in the couple uh, past seasons. I like it, buddy. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, tell us a little bit about what you got going on with the blog, all that stuff, and uh, what you're excited for before the season. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to be writing a piece today uh, about uh, who I think is going to be the top five uh, highest uh, yardage receivers this season. Uh, so that'll come out later today. And then uh, – yeah, I'm just really excited to get into the CFL season. I've been counting down the days. Preseason should be fun, and I just cannot wait to see AJ Olette, uh for the Riders. Love it, buddy. Keep uh, keep bringing the hammer. Uh, thank you so much. Definitely uh, just shout out to you, buddy. I believe the, the youngest contributor here of, of uh, everyone drafting today. So uh, yep. keep up the good work, and you'll do good things here in the future, bud. Uh, we will definitely keep in touch down the line. So let's Thanks go to, I believe, the 24th pick of the third round. Thank you so much, Bruce. We'll talk to you later, buddy. Connor, back-to-back -back picks here in the third round. We'll throw you on the clock for um, pick number twenty-four. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was a it was a long second round here, but uh, I got I got three picks coming up, so I'm excited. Uh, two back-to-back, -back, like you mentioned. There's still a lot of talent on this draft board, and I'm going to dive deep into that well here. Uh, one of these linebackers on the list, and I am going linebacker with this pick because when I looked at uh, you know, kind of evaluated Toronto's roster and, and the, the talent pool of the draft here. You know, Toronto, I, I found to be a little bit thin at the front seven. Uh, I thought maybe if you're going to target something in the draft, try to get some of this this talent in the draft. Why not go uh, for an area that you're thin at, bring them in for camp, get them in, see what they can do. Um, so one of the names on this list that is still available, or sorry, on the board that is still available that I love on my list is Jeffrey Canton Arku from Memphis the six foot three linebacker. He had uh, a very productive career with Memphis housed an 80 plus yard uh, field goal attempt that he himself blocked. I, I just love this guy as a playmaker, as a linebacker. Uh, he's athletic. His, his lateral quickness during his own pro day, he didn't test at the CFL combine, but his lateral quickness at his own pro day and, you know, take it for what you will. Cause it, you know, it's his guys clocking him, but you know, uh, a four, three, two, uh, four three two shuttle, and then he had a six six nine seven three cone. So lateral quickness for a linebacker uh, for me is is very telling. I love to see that in a guy playing in the front seven. So he's my first pick, and then I'm gonna go to a developable offensive lineman for the Argos here with my second pick, a guy that I am shocked, like Shane was saying, shocked that is still on this board. Theo Benedict, the Lineman of the year for U Sports. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna take a stab at a guy that is still available and it's this type of talent such as Theo Benedict is, you need to take the shot. Um, you know, you could go Giovanni Manu here as well, but I don't know. Like I, I've seen all the rumors here, that would scare me off a little bit here in, in the CFL draft. Like I'm all for drafting these types of talents, um, but you know. Manu seems to be one of these guys that's that's going to stick, like we've seen with, you know, Carter O'Donnell out of the University of of Alberta, um, such as Pierre Olivier Lestage, who has come back, yes, um, such as Laurent Duvernay Tardif, famously out of the University of Laval, right? Like Manu seems to be falling in line with with these caliber of players, and he's getting a lot of talk from from NFL scouts and NFL teams as well. So 
that's why I kind of shied away from Manu and went Theo or Reggio. But uh, yeah, I'm taking the UBC offensive lineman here with my uh, back-to-back pick here in the third round. So what do you think about the balancing act of, uh, you know, kind of mock drafts and then real drafts of, you know, maybe in real life it's 10 to more. Some of these these NFL guys, maybe they go higher compared to, it seems like this draft, some of these guys, I believe three of the last four picks you could argue maybe are kind of NFL, maybe C and Ever type guys with uh, Tanner McLaughlin tight end is probably going to be probably in the NFL for a little bit. Canton RQ, obviously, and then Theo. That I believe you probably think uh, the the linebacker will probably get an NFL look as well. Um, where our, dra- our mock drafts a little bit different, where some of these guys are kind of going later. Personally, that's why it kind of scared me away from you know guys like Geo. I know Shane thought maybe maybe you know me and Blake would take some of the UBC guys, but me just kind of not being sure if they were going to be ever down here. Obviously, Geo's kind of starting to blow up with uh, his pro day and some of these visits and stuff. And then Theo, I just don't think will probably be. Uh, maybe a reasonable option in the next few years, maybe it's a little bit more down the line, but tell us a little bit about that balancing act and how that kind of weighed into your options. Obviously you didn't have too many uh, mid round picks, so it's easier for you to maybe take a stab now here when you have uh, a few at the, the end of the third round. So tell us a little bit about some of those prospects and how you kind of balanced that, that what into your thought process. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's tough to, you know, look at these guys and, and think that, you know, they, they could end up on NFL rosters and the likelihood that they do, um is is higher at least get a shot at a camp right like even you know tyrell ford recently got a, a chance with the packers mark antoine Dupois got a chance with with the packers so nfl teams are more and more taking shots on on canadian talent which makes it harder to spend the draft capital i think in the cfl draft of a high pick on somebody that might not be there versus you know a guy like Tyson Hergott, Luke Brubaker, those types of players that you know will. And, you know, maybe they aren't the talent of, you know, a, a Jeffrey Kantanarku or, um, you know, the guys that are, are projected NFL type players, but you can develop them into really darn good um, career CFL players. So I, I think there is a lot of value to taking these types of guys versus the guys that might be a gamble. You might get them back after an NFL camp. You might be fighting with, an NFL team for them. I think the place to take your shot on the the long term um, or mid term NFL guys is the the kind of later rounds. And some teams will do it. Some teams in the past we saw. You know, we have the national picks now, but teams use territorial picks because why not? You could use a national pick on a guy because why not? It, it's an extra pick that did play into my thinking here too uh, in selecting Theo. Um, it's I, I've got a, a few picks here in the third round. Didn't have any picks in the second round. Don't have any picks in the fourth round. Um, and I just don't believe that by the fifth round or the sixth round that uh, that Theo Benedict is is still going to be sitting there waiting. So I thought if he's still on the draft board, that by this point, uh, then why not? But there is a ton of offensive line talent too that we still haven't touched on uh, available. There is. So, Connor, that ends uh, your two back-to-back picks, but I'm going to keep you in here, keep you, invite you into the BC's war room uh, with Blake and I. Blake and I are going to kind of talk through things and then maybe get your opinion and maybe persuade us uh, to where you think. Now, going into this, me and Blake wanted to walk away with two two offensive linemen, hopefully in these four picks. Um, looking at who's available, I know a guy that uh, you guys at CFP – uh, somewhat like I know Marsh, I believe, was kind of worried a little bit about his arms, uh, but that's offensive lineman Daniel Shin out of the University of Alberta. I believe a guy that's probably going to play on the inside. Um, I know you guys kind of talked about, I believe, the, the Sean Oakman and kind of uh, him getting that tested that way of, of some of these offensive or defensive tackles that are going to come up here from big time Division One schools and kind of, uh, you know, not to slight U Sports in any way. Obviously, we're both big fans of U Sports promoted very well, but it's a little bit different than kind of some of the tackles that maybe he's going to face. Uh, up here, especially in the Canada West. So leaning towards maybe Daniel Shin or Gio, obviously bringing him back to UBC. Um, and then a guy that obviously you you had on the podcast um, would kind of be more of maybe uh, a look down the line or maybe for next year. But linebacker Nick Weeb, I would love to maybe draft him here with this pick, uh, bring him in and hopefully develop him. Obviously a guy that's coming off a torn ACL in the Canada West semifinal. Um, so before I go to Connor Blake, is there any way that, or is there any kind of prospect you are leaning to specifically? Yeah, I was, uh, I was leaning to Nick Weeb there. Like you said, Cole, uh, he tore his ACL in the Canada West semifinals. So he'll be recovering for most of this year, but 
he's definitely a uh, project that you can keep for next year and uh, in future seasons. I think, you know, it's it's tough with Joel DeBlanco, obviously having um, the, the professional experience, being in training camps with Seattle, New Orleans, USFL as well. But, um, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm fairly high. I know you guys are as well high on Nick Weeb. I think Nick Weeb could arguably be maybe one of the best linebackers of this class, depending on how it kind of shakes up down the road. But very high on Nick Weeb. And, and kind of, Connor, what is your maybe thought process on this? If we're maybe going through uh, this last pick for BC here in the third round, we're thinking between maybe Daniel Shin, Giovanni Manu, and Nick Weeb. Is there anywhere? Or is there? What are your thoughts? I, I first off, I want to I want to stick on with Nick Weeb here because I absolutely love Nick Weeb uh, as a player. Unfortunate that he got hurt in that Can West game with the with the ACL. But yeah, Nick Weeb is is a very damn talented player. And you talk about you know we were talking about the the Sean Oakman factor, guys who have kind of seen it, maybe not at the same caliber, but Nick Weeb. We can't forget that he's a transfer from a dang good college program in in Oregon right so he has seen NFL size talent maybe not at NFL caliber of play but NCAA division 1 at the University of Oregon so that's a pretty good taste of what you might see in the C- in the CFL maybe on a, a very you know microscopic level but it's it's a pretty good comparison then he comes up to Canada plays at the University of Saskatchewan is an absolute terror I, I love Nick Weeb. So if, if you want to take him and stash him here, I, I don't think that's a horrible pick. Going offensive line here, um, you know, you did draft a, a pretty darn talented offensive line, uh, offensive lineman earlier in this draft. I don't think it's it's harmful to to double down either there. But uh, again, we got to take into consideration if it is Giovanni Manu, is he staying? Is he going? He's already visiting, you know, more teams in the NFL than I can count with my fingers so that's a tough one for me but i I do love the 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 talent of giovanni manu and if he does come back that's a great uh that's a great pick for the for the bc lions and he would be a a damn good addition awesome so still going kind of going back and forth in my head i'm not too sure i think we're going to kind of go it we're going to cut it down to maybe daniel shin nick weeb and i think ultimately we're going to go Nick Weeb, linebacker from the University of Saskatchewan, um, a guy that ultimately you're probably going to stash, tearing the ACL in, I believe, November, maybe late October there. Um, probably going to be ult- ultimately probably not available till at least at least you think after Labor Day at the, at the minimum. Um, a guy that's super talented, I think, um, when you watch Saskatchewan Huskies play, a guy that jumped out uh, on whether you're watching Canada West or just his highlight video on, uh, you know, his Instagram, YouTube, but... Um, a guy that I think is going to come in and be a very good uh, contributor. You know, you guys had him on, obviously, CFP, and he talked about how he was willing to be a special teamer and stuff like that and not really had an ego. Asked to play some special teams reps at uh, the University of Saskatchewan, obviously, and seek those out. So um, I think a guy that's going to be able to come in here and hopefully do a lot of good things. Obviously, we have uh, Canadians ahead of them, uh, you know, Ben Halatic, Bo Lacumbo. Bo's obviously getting up there a little bit in age, just re-signed, uh, you know, Josh Wood. So um, I think a guy that you can add to the linebacking core and can be a contributor for a few years here to come down the line. So, um, Blake, I know I got the thumbs up from you. Hopefully got the double thumbs up from Connor. Uh, we will throw Connor actually back on the clock, if I'm not mistaken, with his next pick here. Pick yeah. number 27 in the third round. Connor, you are back on the clock. Last and final pick for me, and I will say yes for the double thumbs up. Give you the double thumbs up on that one because he's actually a guy that I had on my draft board. Uh, just so happened that uh jeffrey can't arku was available for me uh otherwise i probably would have taken taken nick weeb if uh if it had come down to it but in this pick final pick uh i'm giving the argos a defensive lineman another guy that i think they can develop and i said that i thought they were thin on the front seven don't have a fourth round pick so some people might think this is a bit of a reach but it's exactly because i don't have a fourth round pick that i'm going to go get this player jj messier what we like to call him at CFP, uh, out of York University. Uh, he had a, a impressive invitational combine. They had a, a pretty impressive uh, national combine, very impressive OUA season. I know we, you know, at York, he, they don't get a lot of shine. But to me, and we've said this all year, he really was the, the bright spot on that York Lions team. Like offensive coordinators, there's one guy on the field that you have to game plan for. 
and it was him. And there's plenty of tape of him taking double and triple teams out there. So uh, he he is definitely definitely the type of player that you got a game plan for. And I think Toronto, with him in their own backyard, they're they're kind of maybe looking over their shoulder, hoping they can kind of steal somebody out of the out of the hometown York Lions program. Love it. So Connor's the last pick. Connor, thank you so much. Obviously, like I said, no experts on here, but somebody that probably knows it more than uh, you know a few of us here, people in the chat watching. So I appreciate you jumping on here, be able to kind of share some of your knowledge about this year's class, this year's prospects. Um, before you get out of here, tell us what you guys got going on at CFP. Um, obviously, East West Bowl here. You guys will probably be in attendance and hopefully giving us a bunch of good content to follow. So um, tell us what you guys got cooking. For sure, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just before I go, ton, ton of good. There's sorry, ton of great content creators on here. I should say, uh, and obviously the legendary uh, Mark Steven on with us, which was which was incredible as well. But uh, at CFP, we are we are laser focused on the draft right now. Uh, should have a mock draft coming out this week. Uh, myself and Wade will be will be working on those. I know Marsh already has his first mock draft out on CFL.ca. So it's just, uh, you know, retooling the draft 100 here. We'll probably put out a second version of that updated with, you know, how the combine kind of fell and, and impacts that now. Mock drafts, those sorts of things. Uh, really appreciate, again, everybody else on here. Uh, you know, guys like Andrew at Turf District, uh, Cliffy with, with Flight Deck, Shane doing his thing with 13th Man, uh, yourself, Cole and, and Blake and, and uh you know, Bruce doing his thing too. So thank you so much to, to everybody on here. And coach, I can't forget coach either, man. Like what a, what a spectacle uh, from him. That was incredible. So again, yeah. Um, appreciate everybody on here. They're all doing their thing. And, you know, I think the more people churning out content for, for the league that we all love and the leagues, I should say that we all love U sports included CJFL included, uh, you know, just huge thank you to everybody uh, who loves Canadian football football out there and is is you know passionate enough to do things like this about it awesome thank you for uh thank you thanks for the little cgfl mention i like that too but uh thanks so much for hopping on here connor and we'll talk soon hopefully maybe have you on at the uh, east west bowl or something like that do some more content so uh, we'll chat soon chat soon connor for sure. let's go to winnipeg bring in jason new uh new winnipeg adopted fan let's say for the next uh <laughs> few minutes here as he picks his last pick here uh with round three pick number 28 jason who are you thinking about selecting for the winnipeg blue bombers so i'm gonna go and close um my picks out for this draft with a bit of a boring pick i'm gonna go with fullback brad Haladic from the university of british columbia um winnipeg currently does not have a fullback on the roster and their long snapper uh is currently 38 years old so uh, Haladic is seen as a guy that's going to develop into a long snapper at the Canadian Football League level. So I think this kind of fills two needs for Winnipeg. I think, you know, when you think of fullbacks, like you think in the NFL that they're almost extinct. But in the CFL, they're still very much a very relevant position. They play a big role on special teams. And um, oftentimes they double as your tight ends out there on offense. So I think at the end of the day, that's why I'm going to go with Ben Haladic or sorry, Brad Haladic. Uh, with this pick for Winnipeg. That screams a Mike O'Shea pick, just a guy that's going to come in and compete his compete his butt off. Um, like you mentioned about the special teams aspect, I think his, his probably long-term uh, best outcome of kind of sticking on the roster is probably likely more at the long snapper. Obviously, like you mentioned, fullback kind of hard to come by in the CFL, hard to kind of get in on formation, stuff like that when, uh, you know, a lot of the times you're probably five, four, or, uh, five receivers wide um, instead of being in that four receiver wide with maybe two backs. Um, unless you're kind of an athletic freak, I feel like it's just hard um, to ultimately find value in, in a straight up blocking back, um, especially when you can find some of these bigger bodied receivers. Even now, some of these teams are just bringing in jumbo, jumbo, you know, jumbo packages with an extra offensive lineman instead of kind of that fullback, uh, H back type role. So um, I think I think his long term outcome is that long snapper, like I mentioned. So uh, I like that you found value there at, you know, a little bit longer or older long snapper in Winnipeg there think he can kind of find a roster spot here in the next couple of years and, and being a, a key contributor uh, as a Canadian long snapper and finding that value. So um, Jason, like the pick, buddy. Anything else about Mr. Halatic before we wrap things up? No, I think uh, I don't really want to overanalyze a fullback here, so <laughs> I won't. My, my man. So before we get out of here, anything else uh, to plug? Obviously, you and the Mark cast, 
Um, we'll be super busy here when CFL season uh, comes up. I forget your uh, other partner's name there um, with your guys' live shows throughout the season. Evan, uh, if Evan, I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It always is on the tip of my tongue, and I can never uh, remember it right away. But Evan, you and uh, obviously the Markcast doing a ton of great stuff. But tell us what you got going on with your channel and with uh, Evan and Markcast. Yeah, so um, like I said uh, earlier, um, a little bit on hold for now just because I've been doing a lot of uh, major life uh, things with uh, starting a new job. So trying to get used to that, first of all. But, uh, you know, in the lead up to the CFL season, I'm probably going to do a preview video on every team, perhaps uh, – get some of you guys on for um, uh, interviews for uh, specific teams and uh, kind of go over their outlooks for the coming season. And then during the season, I like to do uh, preview videos and prediction videos, as well as uh, those weekly recaps with the Marquez, like you just said. So um, that's what I have coming up on the channel. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to that soon. Awesome, buddy. Can't wait for you guys and uh, following along with all your guys' good content throughout the season. And you guys are one of the busiest uh, with you, Evan and uh the mark cast as well as yourself putting out all the previews picks and stuff like that so uh, i know you never rest when the season comes so take that rest buddy uh get it while you can because the season is barreling down before we know it. it's going to be here pal so uh thank you so much jason for hopping on today buddy and we'll chat soon yeah no problem buddy all right that will take us to our last pick of the cfl mock draft we will head to the reigning defending Grey Cup champions, Montreal Alouettes, <laughs> Cliffy Pine, Cliffy. Long wait once again to the end of the draft. Who are you selecting? You got a pick of the litter here. Now it's almost like reverse. You know, you're at the first pick of the, or you're the first pick of the last, you know, uh, round. But who are you going with? And uh, have you had a lot of fun here today? Oh my God, what a blast! I mean, as I said. I came up with a list of all kinds of players that I think would be a good fit for the Alouettes and just watching them get picked off one by one by one by one. And it's like, ooh, ooh, oh, dang, okay, oh, all right. So now you got to you gotta recalculate. You got to re uh, – what's the other word? Uh, yeah, I guess recalculate. So what you want to do, what what moves do you think the Alouettes would be making if they were in this position? And wow. <laughs> it's it's funny because there's so many great players that are still available, believe it or not. And that's the thing that these guys have actually fallen down to this point is, as you said, I've, I've got the pick of the litter here. This is great. I mean, it's kind of funny because, yeah, the last pick of the first, the first, second, third round, whatever, usually goes to the great cup champions. So now what needs do you have? Like what, what positions do you think need attention or is it just a matter of, I oh, just add them on because, you know, why the hell not? So that was kind of my thought with this pick. I'm kind of waffling between a couple of players here, but I think I've made my decision. So with the 29th pick of the 2024 CFL draft, on behalf of the Montreal Alouettes, I am pleased to select Justin Sambu, defensive lineman from University of Baylor. Awesome. So Cliffy, a guy that I had my eye on myself, um, ultimately when it came to the fourth round, I was he was in consideration, but... Thought maybe the two offensive linemen and linebacker were more important for my needs, specifically for the BC Lions. Um, but a guy that I believe is more of a bigger body, probably going to be more so of a defensive tackle type, uh, but can rush the passer because he is athletic for his size. But tell us a little bit more of why you picked uh, Mr. Sambu from the University of Baylor. I think he's cut from the exact same cloth that Luol Ugalak was cut from. Uh, he was also a, a bit of a... I believe fr friends of Luol, I believe, right? They grew up together or something like that? Grew up together. They played, uh, I think, uh, high school football together, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I mean, these guys know each other very well. And uh, Sambu had even said that he looked at the career path of how the wall has gone. You, you saw what an outstanding football is. The first season he had in the Canadian Football League. Uh, my God, I mean, like the, the ceiling on the wall Ugalak is fantastic. And we got to see exactly what he was able to do for the Alouettes this year. And I would not be surprised at all to see Justin Sambu follow in that same path and just go everything word for it. And if Montreal is able to select him in the draft and be able to plug him into that spot more or less and get the opportunity to learn from guys like uh, Mustafa Johnson, uh, I was going to say Sean Lemon, but that's obviously not going to happen. But uh, a, a lot of the, the young defensive linemen that are going to be a part of this Alouette's team, he's going to fit in very nicely there. And that's exciting. I mean, if the Alouette's do it, go ahead and get Luke Brubacher and Justin Sambu on this defensive line. Holy cow, that is going to be just an embarrassment of riches for the Alouettes and a, a move that I think would be one that will pay off for years to come. I'm glad you said years to come, right, Cliffy? That's more of, uh, you know, kind of 
this year, obviously, everything you're probably getting impact-wise is all house money, obviously, when you're playing on a rookie contract. But if they're able to contribute and be valuable starters there in year two and three and stuff like that, um, I think it's only going to pay dividends for the Montreal Alouettes. So I like the picks sticking in the trenches, too. You can never hurt. Um, you know, I'm a big advocate of, uh, I think, teams win in the trenches and win up front. So um, like your two picks, Cliffy. That concludes, everybody, our three-round mock draft. Um, I'm going to kind of uh promptly kind of bring everybody in here everybody that's still in here actually anyways and kind of just go around the table here guys if everyone's cool with that clippy we'll start with you um did you have fun with something like this a live stream of a mock draft i don't think kind of been happening too much obviously people do mock drafts and, and kind of put them out in article form but uh something that i think can can be cool for you know cfl content creators to come together and uh like we, we've been mentioning right none of us are experts and none of us really can uh you know probably are going to nail any of these picks usually even guys like John Hodge and, you know, Marsh and stuff like that, they can really, you know, it's, it's hard for them to nail some of these picks, right? So um, talk a bit about how much fun you had and how much of, you know, you think this could be a good time for the CFL. 120 people watching us today here on YouTube and uh, on Twitter and stuff like that. So talk a bit about the experience today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've been doing sort of uh, mock draft and sort of trying to prognosticate what the Alouettes were going to do in uh, like back when I was writing my blog, just to see what direction I thought the Alouettes were going to go in. And, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised to see that more often than not, it was kind of, all, we were kind of along the same lines. I mean, there's a couple of picks that they've made that I'm like, really? Is that where you're going to go? And it ended up working or it ended up didn't working. Sometimes that's just the way it is with the draft. So you, you, you have to trust your scouts. You have to trust the people in charge that they know what they're doing as far. Like when their, their time comes, I know that they've got their eyes on certain players and then end up being drafted by somebody else. So now you got to think on the fly. And that's what it was today as well. A couple of players that I thought would be great fits for the Alouettes, Taken right away. I'm like, oh, okay. So now you've got to recalculate. You got to start thinking again. Okay, what would be a fit? What would be a good like? What would be a, a good choice that the Elwes should make at this position right here? And to me, that's part of the fun of something like this. And to see what everybody else was doing as well, incredible. I mean, I think uh, a lot of the picks that were made were outstanding. I think uh, if the if these CFL teams do make those picks. They're just going to get better, and it's going to be more fun. It's going to have a chance to really showcase a lot of the Canadian talent that's out there, not just in U Sports, but in the NCAA as well. I mean, there's a lot of great Canadian-born players that are going to be taken in this draft, and I'm really excited for April 30th. I'm really excited to see not just where the Alouettes are going to pick, but who's going to end up where. I mean, there's a lot of different ways this can go. I mean, you didn't allow drafts in this pick, which I think was a good idea just because you never know what's going to happen, right? But, I mean, if, if certain teams are probably going to take a look at like this draft board, for example, and say, oh, I really want this guy. Maybe I got to make a move. I got to see who's willing to play with me and who's willing to make a deal. And that's part of the fun of the draft day as well, is to see who's going to maybe slot up and go up to number one and take over from Edmonton. Or is someone just going to scale back and get more picks as a result? I mean, that's just part of the fun of the, the whole draft process. To me, that's what excites me. That's what gets me interested more than anything else. So I'm really excited to see where it's all going to land like where the chips are going to fall this year is going to be really really interesting this year it's awesome because there's thousands of different mock drafts thousands of different outcomes and we will see that officially april 30th so cliffy before we get you out of here tell us everything you got going on with the flight decks and everything this season obviously you mentioned about uh having offensive tackle uh, john bossy on the podcast so tell us a bit more oh we're so excited to have him on and uh as we get closer to training camp, uh, we're going to be going live every week, and uh, we're just so excited. We've got a couple of ideas that were in place. Uh, we just interviewed Jason Moss, uh, Danny Machocha as well, to sort of talk about their Grey Cup experience and how they came to be as far as building a, a what turned out to be a championship roster, how they're planning to go forward in 2024 and beyond. Uh, just absolutely outstanding. So if, if you guys want, uh, by all means, check out the Alouette's Flight Deck. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us... Pretty much anywhere you get your podcasts uh, or just go to www.alouettesflightdeck.ca. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I mean, we're we're planning to pump out a ton of content, especially once training camp gets started. We're planning to be there as much as possible. We're going to give as much content as we can, and we're just beyond excited to be able to provide that for the rest of the CFL universe. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cliffy, and we'll talk soon. All right, let's go to Jason. Jason? Take you out there for a little bit. Jason, <laughs> did, did you have some fun today? Obviously, you had to be the uh, good sport and switch to Winnipeg, but talk a bit about how much fun you had today and uh, kind of gathering with everybody. Yeah, it's always good to see um, content creators from around the CFL because I think they 
really are the lifeblood of this league. I think that, you know, just the grassroots, um, you know, support from the the content creators, I think it's just so important. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun today. Um, the CFL draft's always interesting to me because I think it's one of the most unpredictable, unpredictable drafts in all of sports. When you think about it, there's so many different uh, factors in play. You got to weigh, uh, you know, all the guys that have NFL draft interest. You got to weigh, uh, you know, all the different um, directions that every team could go. Again, you're not necessarily drafting day one starters, so you got to take that into account too. So I think it's a very interesting uh, time every year, and I think at the end of the day, um, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens uh, come the 30th. It will be. So thank you so much, Jason, for hopping on, buddy, and we'll, we'll chat soon. Connor, let's kick it to you, buddy. Did you have fun? I know you do a lot of this content with you and and kind of everything you guys got going on with CFP, but how cool is it for, uh, you know, people to get together? And I feel like uh, something that we all kind of agree upon is, you know, with people down in the NFL and stuff like that, there's thousands of mock drafts out there and people are on, you know, podcasts and live streams and stuff like that. I feel like it's hard to come by up here. Obviously, you guys are doing a kind of good stuff, three down. Um, there's a few guys out there that put out, you know, articles and stuff like that where you can read. But, uh, you know, as, as Shane was saying, you know, Compared to the NFL, some of this stuff is hard to come by when you're, you know, trying to do some research for some of these guys and they don't, you don't have much. Um, but was something like this cool for you? And, and does this interest, you know, down the line of doing this maybe, you know, every year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it, it was. It was a great experience. I had a lot of fun with it. And I think that's kind of the main point uh, with all that you heard, you know, Cliffy say it. And, and just before that, uh, it was said as well, like it was a fun experience and, and right or wrong. Um it's fun to do these types of drafts. It's great to have, you know, content creators doing these types of drafts, having live streams because you're right. It, it's, it's not as easy to come by for the Canadian football fan as it is to come by for, you know, the NFL fan, right? Like you can search NFL mock draft on YouTube and you'll get a hundred hits easy or more. Like that's just low end, but you search CFL mock draft on YouTube and you get, I don't know, I don't know, it, it wouldn't be nearly as much as the NFL stuff, right? So uh, to do stuff like this, to have content for, for CFL fans to watch it is amazing. And I think the more the better. Um, you know, written stuff is nice to have, but we are in, in a digital age largely, right? So to have this type of video content, I, I think is great. Um, and yeah, I had I had a lot of fun. It felt, um, felt like a fantasy draft almost, like a CFL fantasy draft, but like for the CFL 2024 class, these U-sports guys that you you want to see like i don't am i going to be right with these picks probably not but like it's still a lot of fun to do right so yeah it was great awesome connor thank you so much and everybody obviously get over to cfp check out everything that connor and the boys got going on over there they're doing a ton of good stuff for the cfl and uh we appreciate like i mentioned you guys are a big part of kind of my cheat sheet and preparing for today so uh thank you boys all your hard work is uh definitely very 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 much appreciated I well, appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for having me on today. It was great to be part of Later, Connor. We'll chat soon, buddy. Let's go. There's three. We're, we're, we're dwindling away here, Bruce. You are uh, our last batter here, buddy. Bruce, did you have fun? Obviously, like I mentioned, man, you are uh, someone that I definitely admire now, knowing that you are uh, a younger person, obviously, like you mentioned, um, still in high school and doing content creation and stuff like this. Um, I think it's a good stuff for the CFL. Obviously, you live in the hotbed of uh, you know, Canadian football, diehard football, me playing, you know, junior football here in Vancouver Island, uh, you know, playing with guys from Saskatchewan and stuff like that, really learning what, uh, you know, and, and even talking, kind of comparing that, uh, you know, talking to someone like Jackson, of, of someone that grew up in Regina and kind of hearing about how important football is taken out there and how serious it is. Um, just super cool. And, and definitely, like I said, man, keep up the good work. You were doing a lot of good stuff, especially for your age. Um, I think you can do a lot of good stuff down the line for the CFL, bud. So keep it up. Last thing for you, man. How much fun did you have today, and how much are you looking forward to the CFL draft? So much fun, man. I I really appreciate you guys bringing me out. Uh, I think it, it was fun to kind of have the, the Saskatchewan Rams as my uh, my draft class. Uh, looking back, uh, there were probably some guys that I missed, but I had a lot of fun. Uh, this was great. This was really great. I hope we get to do this every year. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to you, buddy. This will be the first annual CFF mock draft. Look forward to uh, year two next year, folks. But um, definitely uh, just had a good time, Bruce, like I said. Um, if you wanted to go maybe another Saskatchewan uh, Rams, maybe you could have took like someone like, uh, you know, maybe Cameron Ma, I believe. I uh, could possibly see his name called this year. But uh, love the picks, Bruce. You had a lot of good uh, picks, buddy, and had a lot of good fun. So, uh, Bruce, 
everybody go check out his his uh, blog, everything he's got going on, and his Twitter page as well. A lot of good stuff. Follow for uh, more details on everything that Bruce has got going on. Bruce, buddy, this will not be the last time. We will chat soon and maybe do some more content creation down the line, bud. So awesome. thanks for joining us, and have a good rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Later, Bruce. And now back to the boys are back. My good pal, Blake, my loyal co-host, Blake. 125 people watching us right now, pal. Say hello to the fans. Um, 125 people watching us on YouTube and Twitter. There be, better be 125 likes, uh, comments, all that good stuff. Tell us how you guys felt about the, the mock draft, if you guys liked that. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be too involved in the comments tonight. Um, trying to balance the banners, trying to balance who was coming up. A little bit hard to go back and forth. Not the best at walking and chewing gum, guys. I apologize, but... Um, my multitasking skills weren't the best. Comment down below after the videos, uh, still posted on the YouTube channel. If you guys are watching, you know, after the fact, I know our guy Jay, uh, loyal fan of last year, was able to, you know, mostly catch the, sh the live shows uh, afterwards. Him being at work and stuff like that. You guys don't have to necessarily watch the live shows when they're live. You can still find them on the Canadian Football Fanatics YouTube channel right after we go live. Should be posted on there roughly, you know, maybe a few minutes after there. Uh, if you go to the Canadian Football Fanatics YouTube channel. Go over to the live tab. It'll be like home videos, playlist, and then I believe live. Click the live. Um, you can find all of our live videos. Everything Blake and I did last year, everything that Jason and I, you just saw picking for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at Hussey's Huddle, all of our NFL lives that we did last year during the season, um, all of our good content with Julio last year, our, me, Blake and I's post-game shows, all those lives you can find over there at the live tab will be a ton of good stuff. So, Blake is a busy man earning the dollars. I believe is at work, so I'm not too sure if he's able to chime in too much here. But before we get out of here, like I mentioned, Blake, we are up to 133 people watching on uh, YouTube, Twitter. So all we appreciate it so so much. Um, if you guys are watching right now, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Head on over to the Instagram, follow that, smash that like button. I see what Blake's doing. Smash that like button. Uh, smash the subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram. We are at 176 followers on YouTube. Let's try to get that up to 200 followers by, I believe, uh, April 26, folks, is the two-month mark of when we started the Instagram page. So that is 12 days from now. If we can get to 200 uh, followers, excuse me, on the Instagram in 12 days, I think that would be a lot of good fun having 200 followers uh, in two months and a lot of good merch. stuff. So head on over to the merch. Instagram. What, what's going on, Blake? Let them know about the merch. I, I will. I will in a little bit here. As well as YouTube. Go over there. Subscribe. We are at only 135 subscribers on the YouTube channel. So go over there. Make sure that you're not just subscribed about the uh, to the Instagram. Make sure you subscribe as well to the YouTube channel. Let's try to get that to a more even number. 136, I believe, subscribers on YouTube is a not 176 followers on Instagram. So let's go even that number up. Let's try to make that at least 150 subscribers on the YouTube channel. I believe before we went live today, it was up to, uh, I want to say 136 or something like that. So let's hopefully, uh, by the time I'm done and over with and pressed uh, end stream, we're at 150 at least. Uh, the quicker and the more often you guys follow, the less you guys have to be reminded and hear me just go on and on about subscribing and all that good stuff. But as always, all the subscribes, all the support, just a, we appreciate that, Blake and I, everybody that was uh, contributors today. We appreciate it so much. Blake, uh, Andrew, Bruce, Mark, uh, Jason, uh, other, uh, excuse me, who else was there? Cliffy, um, Connor, um, Coach Phil, everybody that was able to contribute here today. We appreciate it so much to be able to like, contribute, as well, go over to follow those guys, all their social media, all that stuff as well. Can't plug their stuff uh, enough as well. Can't believe it. Under two hours, too. I was definitely predicting this thing was going to go uh, maybe two and a half, three hours. I'm thankful because I can get out of here in time, folks, and get uh, some stuff done outside of this. So um, had so much fun. Hopefully, everybody that was tuning in today enjoyed as well. Um, Blake, and try to bring you in. Are you able to? To kind of maybe say anything for a little send off. I know you're at work here. Say in one second. Gonna give Blake another 30 seconds here, folks. But um, stay tuned. Like uh, Shane mentioned, Shane and I should have a mock draft here coming out for the 13th Man Sports 
mockdraft.com in the next week or so. Uh, so stay tuned before then. Uh, we will have an, a mock draft out, I would say, before uh, the 30th for sure. But let's try to aim for it next weekend uh, as a deadline as well. Stay tuned to the Instagram page. Can, excuse me, folks. Canadian Football Fanatics. On Instagram, I will be releasing as well as YouTube. Uh, I will be releasing some YouTube shorts slash Instagram reels on five prospects to watch this week. We will have a video coming out each day. That's right, folks. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We will have a, a video coming out on the YouTube channel as well as the Instagram. So stay tuned to Instagram reels as well as YouTube shorts. We will have prospects to watch five of them, folks. And you can guarantee at least one of our picks or maybe two of our picks will be featured on the five prospects to watch when we upload those this week. So stay tuned to the Instagram as well as the YouTube. When you guys follow and subscribe to the YouTube and Instagram, hit the notification, a uh, little bell reminder. You guys will be notified every time we post content. So going to bring in my co-host, my loyal co-host, co excuse me if I could speak. It's been two hours, uh, Blake, so my my, my Englishing is, uh, is getting up there. I need a drink of water. I need to get uh, a breather here. But... Um, as we bring you in here, bring you in here, buddy. Working man at work, you're joining us here. I, I appreciate it so much, buddy. But uh, were you able to? I, I'm sure. I, I, as as I know you are, you're either calling games and you're listening still. Uh, you're either refing games or you're doing the score clock. You're at work. You're still listening. I know you always got the headphones in. So were you able to enjoy today's mock draft? And did you have some fun? Yeah, definitely. I uh, I enjoyed as much as I could. I had some audio difficulties with the uh, first round, but. After that, it was uh, it was an awesome time. Thanks for everyone for joining us. Uh, Cole, you kind of put this together. Uh, you and I are a team, but you kind of took the lid on or the lead on this one. So, thanks so much for doing this, Cole. Uh, you and I, we got some fun stuff planned. The season's uh, coming closer and closer. So, I can't wait to get to May first, and then uh, to June, and hopefully all the way to the Grey Cup. Absolutely, buddy. I can't thank you enough for just being my co-host. Um, because yes, I, I, you know, you could say maybe I do this, you know, from your words, you know, do this myself, but, uh, this, none of my, none of this stuff I do is by myself. Um, obviously a big help to you, a big help to everybody that contributed here today. Uh, a big help to Mackenzie at big Mac graphics, Mackenzie Dunford, uh, my man, CGFL alum like myself, um, helps me out with all the graphics. Uh, Mackenzie, big shout out to you. If anybody's in the uh, need of kind of some graphics, anything like that, head on over to Twitter, Instagram, go ahead, uh, follow Big Mac Graphics, Big, uh, excuse me, Mackenzie Dunfort, I believe is on Twitter as well. Um, go check him out. Go give him a follow, like his content, all that good stuff. I appreciate Big Mac for helping me out. Mackenzie, you are definitely appreciated as well. So like I mentioned, uh, you know, folks, a lot of the time, it maybe it looks like a one man band or something like that. Even if some of the post-game shows or something like that, or if there's one man on the camera, it is never a one-man show. I always have a ton of help behind the scenes. Um, even a shout-out to, you know, family, the girlfriend, Carly, as Blake, you know, uh, can't do this without a good, loyal, uh, you know, partner that's supporting you at home and able to, you know, take yeah, our, two hours out of our, our day. Fa our family's put up with a lot, man. <laughs> take, two, take two hours out of our, our afternoon to go live and, and ignore them and stuff like that. The post game shows when you know maybe on a Friday Saturday night they're wanting to hang out they're wanting to talk you know watch a movie or something like that. Blake and I are on here or, you know maybe any any content creators are on you know doing doing their thing you know shout out to you know guys I didn't have on you know but Bonfire After Dark and all those things that they got on you know a lot of good content creation across the CFL and stuff like that so uh, I know a lot of good sacrifices come with this so um, I believe that will conclude today's live stream. Two hours we wrap this up, folks. I couldn't believe it. I thought we were going to be at least three hours. Uh, people did not take the five minutes that they needed, which was fabulous. Um, so thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. Blake, 164 people tuning in before we get out of here on Twitter as well as YouTube. I finally figured out how to stream on uh, X, Twitter, whatever people want to call it as well on StreamYard here. So uh, go get the follow count up, folks, on Twitter and Instagram. It's at Cole McGarvey on Twitter. Uh, I should know Blake's Twitter, at Blake3653. At Blake3653. He was motioning to me. I was right, folks. Don't worry. At Blake3653 on Twitter. Go follow him. At Canadian Football Fanatics. No spaces on instagram at canadian football fanatics on apple podcast as well as youtube you can find us on all that good stuff 
The content is only going to wrap up, folks. Stay tuned. Blake and I will most likely be live for the CFL draft. Still trying to nail down which rounds we will be live because we won't be live, on, unfortunately, probably for the uh, entirety of the draft. But stay tuned uh, for that. It'll be coming out on the Instagram page, so details to follow. As always, all the support is greatly appreciated, folks. Uh, go smash that like button. Comment down below. Uh, all that good stuff. Bring on, I see Bruce is in the back. Bring on the AJ Olette hammer and smash the like button, folks. I would appreciate that so much. Uh, Bruce, go do that for me right now, buddy. Smash the like button. Try not to break it too much. When you smash the like button, hit the reminder bell as well so you can get reminded every time the Canadian Football Fanatics are live. When the season starts, you can find Blake and I live every Tuesday or Wednesday nights here, breaking down everything. You know, BC Lions for the most part. We will get into some CFL, you know, giving our picks predicting the week, all that good stuff, as well as some good youth sports, more specifically Canada West football talk. We will probably have, you know, some multiple guests throughout the season, more specifically Matt Young coming on here to talk uh, Canada West, Matt Young being Canada West uh, sideline reporter. So stay tuned. Tuesday, Wednesday nights after the CFL draft, uh, Blake and I will also be up in Cam Loops. For BC Lions training camp on, uh, I believe, May 17th, I want to say, to May 21st. So stay tuned for a ton of good content. We will definitely be live throughout the weekend, uh, producing a lot of good content and hopefully uh, some good line content. Before we get out of here, I still I see Coach Phil. Like I mentioned, I don't know when this man sleeps. He's either watching CFL content. He's either producing CFL content. Coach Phil is either on the mock draft. So Coach Phil, man, one other big salute to you. I appreciate you uh, so much for just jumping on here today, coming back on, watching the, the live stream once again. As always, folks, for Blake and I, this is Canadian Football Fanatics, and we'll catch you on the next live stream.